Um, so, uh, so in terms of the report, um, you know, those are a couple of sections that open up. Um, then I moved into my conceptual lens or the way that I am viewing the interview feedback for this report. Um, I wanted to use a race equity lens. And I think that um, if we don't start talking about the root cause of these issues, we are not going to find a solution. And so placing race right at the center of this topic and then bringing out the ways that uh, systemic racial inequity is playing out in this situation, um, I think really uh, is an important and useful way for us to, to have any kind of conversation or action moving forward. Um, and I think another piece to this um, was that when you, when you're looking at um, a system level uh, racial inequity and then your institutional level and then your more individual levels, oftentimes what, times what ends up happening is, um, and, I'm, and I'm sure most of you already know this, but, but this is my, I'm sharing my, my reasoning. Um, I think that sometimes these levels do not get brought out well enough uh, when people are talking about issues like this and they get overlapped and confused. Sometimes when new programs are developed or issues are brought up, um, it is maybe at a program level, but they're not talking about the systemic racial issues that are going on. And so, for example, in a report like this, if you have um, the main focus on the police department, but you have several respondents that are bringing up um, education, jobs, affordable housing, I don't want that to get missed because it's not a police department issue. It is a structural inequality issue. And so um, I really felt like that was important for us to lay out in some way. Um, another piece to this was um, really wanting to make this kind of data driven. And that's not trying to sound jargony with anybody. I really wanted to say, okay, what kind of information uh, are, do we have? What don't we have? And how is that um, creating issues in us being able to move forward as a community? And so I include some of that in my, rep in my report as well. Um, does, does anybody have any questions about this piece of it? It's probably pretty, pretty straightforward. Um, what I did, um, in the next portion of the report was to uh, pull together some local hey, maps. Crystal. Oh yeah, sorry. We did yeah. have a question um, from Tracy. She said, in terms of lens and police, are the rank and file officers going to be interviewed as well? That is what we would hope is gonna happen next. Um, but uh, that's been discussed. Um, and so what I would like to see is um, moving forward as much of a, um, a similar approach being used uh, when we focus um, on the next leg of the work. Um, and what I, but, but um, you may or may not have been here at the beginning, Tracy, but um, what I, my role is here, um, I know what I would like to do and what I've recommended we do, but I'm not, because I'm not the project manager on any of it, um, I'll kind of let others answer that question at the end of this. Um, but yes, that would be something that uh, would make, enough, make a lot of sense. Uh, I'm trying to read the, the question. Can... Yeah, it says who discussed including officers and who is the project manager? I'll step in. I am the lead uh, on this right now. This focus is the meeting is focusing now on the results of the report that Tracy is putting together. I mean, on the, I mean, on that crystal Dr. Croner is putting together right now. Uh, if you could hold those questions till the end uh, until she is done with this portion. Uh, they're uh, following the agenda. We'll address those if we can get her report out and her information and we'll kindly address your questions. Thank you. Yeah, and I think I should have, it's 
that's kind of me because I said, does anybody have any questions? <laughs> so um, let me just keep moving and then we'll, why don't we just save the questions till the end? How's that sound? Um, so uh, as I was saying, um, the next section of the report, I really try to um, lay out um, some more local data on uh, structural inequities within, within Columbia. Um, and I use that through map data showing um, black residential patterns um, and a map I generated showing um, school, where school buildings are located um, uh, based on low, medium, and high risk um, free and reduced lunch. Um, and what I, and then another map showing um, where police are um, staffed within different neighborhoods in the city. And really what I wanted to do is there could be lots and lots of maps that get layered on top of that, including transportation and in a variety of any other types of resources. Um, but what I really wanted to do was to be able to start opening a conversation moving forward about the different ways and types of resource allocation that goes on within our neighborhoods um, and uh, what those resources look like and um, the really negative influence of neighborhood segregation and why it is that when we, uh, we use maps to begin with to, sh to even discuss a topic like this, um, if there weren't segregation patterns, we wouldn't have such clear lines on our maps the way that we do. Um, and so I kind of laid that out. Hey, Crystal, could, yes. you, sh could you share your screen with those maps? Yeah, sure. Okay, thank you. I mean, I, I hope so. <laughs> Let me see if I can scroll down. Okay, so here's, and let me make this smaller. Can, let me know if you can see if this is gonna be visible. Yeah, we can see it. Okay, so, dang it. Sorry, everyone. Okay, so these are the maps that I have. Um, this one here is taken from the Fair Housing um, Programs Division. They did a housing report. I took that out of it. I generated the map on the bottom left um, showing income levels and where our schools are located with free and reduced lunch status. And then this other map was taken out of the um, Mayor's Task Force uh, on Community Violence Report uh, 2020. And so this is just showing how um, a, a very basic snapshot of how different resources are allocated. And again, um, my hope for that would be that um, it would be a way to open up a conversation and to be, begin to see that this is the structural piece to this um, that then makes um, all of these other factors the factors that they are. Should I just, do you want me to keep this up or? Yeah. Can you can you zoom in a little bit more on those maps? Yeah. Just let me know what you need me to do. My vision's getting bad every worse every year, so I don't know if it's just my vision or. Do you want to see the top ones, the top map, or just the bottom? There's just a comment that um, from Tracy that she can't see the maps very well. Oh, yeah, okay, sorry. Let me see if I can't scan, uh, zoom in a bit. So this is the map that was taken from the Fair Housing. <clears throat> and I, let me see what year, the 2019, their analysis on fair housing. And they have, uh, the report has a ton of information in it. And in fact, I'm using this for another report that I'm doing as well. Um, and so this is showing, um, you know, the yellow, orange, red are the more, um, the, uh, black residential areas within Columbia. And then this um, map here to the left shows our school buildings. The hot pink are the high risk free and reduced lunch. Uh, blue is moderate risk 
And so that means I think if memory serves, high risk is 50 to 75% of the students in the, uh, attending that building uh, are free and reduced lunch eligible. Um, whereas moderate is, tw I think, oh, I don't remember, 25 to 50 maybe. And then low is uh, 25 and below. And so the low are the black dots. And then this one over here shows, this was in the task force report that just went out. Um, if you guys can see that. Um, and we have a question from Anthony Stanton right now. Mm -hmm. He's has his yeah. hand raised. Please go ahead. Good evening, everybody. Hi. Um, those maps are great. That is that is really good GIS information. But I think we already know that. I think mm -hmm. that. Um, the police have that. Police already use that. I think the meat of this whole issue, and maybe I, maybe I got the focus wrong, is the youth that are protesting now are not protesting over the things that those maps represent. I think that we need to focus on the policy, the policy, the policy of um, accountability. The Graham's laws. Uh, how do we hold police accountable? You know, you said it, you said you discussed starting the conversations, and they leading to other conversations. I think the conversation needs to start there. And when you're held accountable, then your policing changes. Um, the last meeting I was at, I I, I equated police need to be held accountable like. Uh, nurses and doctors are with their nursing and doctor's licenses. Their actions are direct link on holding their license. They don't do things that jeopardize their licenses. They don't jeopardize things that, that jeopardize their uh, credibility, their, their credentials. Um, I know police have good credentials, but I don't feel from the outside looking in that they're ever in jeopardy unless something grave happens. When a nurse or doctor does something, every move they make, they're wondering, is my nursing license that I spent four to eight years on the line? Same with a doctor. You know, that's the kind of, that's the kind of environment they exist in. And if police had that same respect and fear for their badge, that's where this conversation gets interesting. That's where uh, those maps really come into play. Mm -hmm. So. I think I remember your comments. How, how, can I, how can I text these in writing? I'm, I'm kind of new to the Zoom thing. Is there a way I can text these or do I just need to email you directly? You, you, you can, or there should be a chat button. Okay. That you, can, that you can type that in, and I I remember these comments within the interview data. I remember this. Okay. So, Thank you, Director. Um, just to piggyback off of what he said, those were some of the things that I had questioned and addressed as well. Mm -hmm. um, to make the police accountable in their professionalism, they they are doing professional work, and just as though um, uh, just that just like Sterling just stated. Um, in a doctor's profession or anybody's profession, you are held accountable when you make mistakes. And I do believe that officers are not. They are allowed to make grave mistakes and nothing is being done. So yeah, I completely think that we need to focus more on the reality of what's going on. And, and yes, the data that you have there is, is great, but as he stated, it's been done before, um, and we need to move past that and add on to what you've got there. So um, we need to start really working towards what the reality, what's really going on, and not what the what's happened in the past, and trying to work and fix those things that, that didn't work. So we need to we need to add on to what already has been done, like not recreating the wheel, but moving the wheel forward. 
Yeah, I agree. Um, I think that that the reason that those maps are put in there, and I think that if you look at the attachment of at least a section in the report where I'm laying out the priorities, there's a structural level. And whereas there is accountability, talk about accountability and processes and policies within the police department and within the organization itself, that's a piece of the work, but it needs to be happening in tandem with resources being allocated differently to end the reasons that cause some of these issues as well. And so it's not just the answer, it's a piece of how all of these pieces fit together. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm hearing um, professional accountability. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm gonna, I'm taking notes um, because I, whenever it comes time to, you know, make these changes or think about how we want to do this within the report, um, I'm going to come back to these notes. So thank you. Um, I don't know that I need to share the screen anymore unless you guys want me to share it, but I'm going to go ahead and close it out so I can see you. Is that all right, everybody? Yeah, that's good. Okay. Yeah, it feels weird. I can't see anybody. Hey, Crystal. Yeah. Uh, one, hi. Hey. Hi. Uh, but before we move on, like, I think I might want to give some two cents on this conversation that we're having. Yeah, sure. Um, I'm not even sure how we really have a conversation about what accountability is if we don't have a shared definition of that. And I don't know if we can have a shared definition of accountability if we don't have a shared definition around safety. I think those maps are important because what that is lifting up is that um, the city even outside of uh, the policing institution has a definition around those things, right? And like we see who that definition is keeping safe and who is protected and who it isn't. Mm -hmm. um, and so I'm just wondering if we are actually going to have time tonight to explore what that means because none of this feels like it's going to move towards anything if everybody has a million different philosophies and there we don't even have shared definitions around what it is we're talking about. Um, yeah, that on a lot of issues, we don't have a common definition on quite a few things, actually. And <clears throat> we told it's all systemic, like doctors and nurses aren't held as accountable as we think. Otherwise, the mortality rate for pregnant women, pregnant black women wouldn't be the way that it is. And so it's all about accountability and safety. And I think that there are some institutions that can mask it better than others. Um, and the one that we're talking about can't mask it at all. Um, and yeah, those shared definitions feel important, especially when we're talking about an institution that's protected by, an institution that's protected by a union. So there's multiple layers to this conversation that we're having. Um, and I'm wondering if we're actually gonna be able to unpack some of those in the time that we have set up here. Where's room for that in the agenda, I guess. Which might not even be a, a question for you, Crystal, because I know you're not facilitating the meeting. Yeah. But I just wanna get clear on the purpose. Well, like, why are we here tonight? The reason that uh, I wanted to bring everybody together, although I've never needed to do it in a meeting before, um, on any project I've been involved in where I an analyze people's interview data and become their voice, I want them to have the opportunity to say, this is, yes, this is, this is what we were saying. This reflects what we were saying. Um, because I don't feel comfortable not having met with you. Before I just turn in a final draft of a report, it's not final right now. It's a rough draft until you guys have had a chance to give your commentary on this. Um, and so that's my purpose. Now, in terms of what kind of work rolls out out of this or what would need to be followed up on, I am not the project manager on that, but that doesn't mean that that's not important or that the project managers wouldn't think that's important. Um, it's just not my decision to make. Yeah, that makes sense. Thank you for clearing that Is up. That, okay, because I don't want to sound like I'm like trying to, I mean, 
I, I really do want to see movement on this. This is so important to me. And so I'm not trying to give you some weird answer. <laughs> uh, yeah, I just, I'm, I'm, okay. I'm, personal, but, uh, I'm just wondering if the data captured is actually the data that's reflective of the cap conversation we need to have, or is there another set of conversations that need to happen? I guess is what I'm wondering. Well, and yeah. Crystal, if I may step in, yeah, mm -hmm. we're trying to confirm what you said, and this is the step we're at. We're trying to engage in an authentic, real process and make this about you, us, as citizens of Columbia that are black and brown. Uh, so this is for this meeting as we sent out was to confirm that in, so that she can finish her report. This is not the end of the work by any means. This is the beginning of the work so that we can engage and do the accountability pieces. So I'm asking you to please let her get the report done so that we can get to action. Uh, there will be action, uh, that, but this is the step in the process. Uh, yeah, sa sadly, and I apologize, and had nothing to do with the other processes, honestly, uh, for some of you that don't know me, I was a part of the other processes uh, that started early on. Uh, but it's like we have people that are willing and I'm willing to give energy for movement in this town and work towards that. So let's get the report in so that then we can reconvene uh, and then talk about action steps. And we're gonna talk about that as soon as Crystal can get done with her report as to what will happen next. But this is not a one time, this is not a listening tour, this is an, act, uh, an action uh, process and we wanna to get to action. And I'm with you about getting to action. Uh, so I'm going to turn the floor back over, as I indicated at, at the beginning, that uh, Dr. Kroner will go through her uh, findings so she can feel uh, ethical in turning in what she feels she heard from you. But she needs to confirm that from you because we want your voices heard. I want your voices heard uh, before this is put into a report. So we must confirm your voices and we're doing it in a large way uh, rather than in a one-on-one -on -one way because uh, we uh, certainly uh, want to bring everybody together because this is a community that's doing this and you've all invested great time and care. So I do hear you, believe me, uh, uh, I hear you. So let's uh, do that. And then let's talk about what are next steps and next actions, and then move forward from there. I just ask you, because we, we do hear you, this group hears you, and we want to create action. And I'm glad to work with Dr. Croner on this, and uh, New Chapter Coaching, and uh, Deputy City Manager DeCarlin, and uh, Lieutenant Esther, who's been here as well. So. Uh, Dr. Crone, if you could do that, if we could get through that part so we can mm -hmm. be done with that part and then move forward to answering more specifics as we can at this point about the what next, okay? There is a what next part. You got an agenda. We're going to follow that agenda. That's why we sent you an agenda, people. I want you to know what's going on, and I, I will move forward with you in transparency as much as I can. And I try to live by transparency always. Yeah, and I think, th and thanks. And, and I, um, I understand uh, the nature of that question, Brittany. Um, uh, so um, one thing I think that makes, we've seen lots of reports come out. Um, I did not want my report to be another one of those reports. Um, this report is not, it's going to be maybe a total of 15 pages. Um, I'd say four or five of them are your actual quotes. Um, a lot of your quotes that are talking about the fact that, what, what, who are we talking about when we're talking about safety and protection? Um, is, are we talking about property? Uh, you know, 
I put your direct quotes in there and then I also laid those out under the same um, race category framework. So I had the more structural level comments, institutional and individual level comments. Um, and so that's probably about four pages of the, uh, at the end of the report. Um, so what was the next, oh, I think the section that, that was sent to you guys that had the key themes of what came out from your responses um, and then your ideas and suggestions and recommendations on how we needed to move forward. Um, I plugged those things into the categories as well. Um, and I was, I'm really trying to be intentional about the way I do this because this is not a report that's like a, uh, like a study, like a research study. This is hopefully going to be a blueprint when it's all put together that people can take in hand and get right to action planning with. Um, and so, yes, I, I can understand some of the feedback around the maps and that's not around this particular issue, but there may be stakeholders that are involved in this who are allocating resources, who are decision makers that need to see that piece so that that piece of that work can get done as well. Um, and so that's really, I'm trying to take as comprehensive of a, of, of a view as I can, but then also make sure that your perspectives, these themes, um, came almost uh, unanimously across everybody's suggestions. So um, except for the fifth theme where uh, I think um, it was kind of in the subtext of everything that we needed to um, you know, in increase diversity and broaden representation um, within city government, within staffing that we needed to, it, it's very uh, white, in terms of staffing and leadership. And so that was something that kind of came out through your different ideas and so forth. But all of the rest of the other themes and the recommendations that came under that were almost unanimously shared at some point. And in particular, um, although I do put out um, the wanting stronger connection and engagement between the police department in a different way that doesn't have anything to do with crime um, and then the next one is the fact that racial profiling is a significant problem and that residents um, are black and brown residents within Columbia do not feel safe or protected because of racial profiling and that we need to get to the bottom of that, that the data and coming to a solution around that. Um, and so most um, all of your, those recommendations came directly from you. And all I did was go through the data uh, in a few different ways and pull them out for frequency to see what showed up the most. And they showed up almost all the way across the board from everybody. Um, and so that's really, again, kind of this blueprint for saying, this is where the work needs to get started. These were the main priority areas where there's some problems with trust. There's some problems with accountability. Um, authenticity and having authentic relationships. Um, and I think also um, I included recommendations in there around city processes and city engagement processes because there were quite a few questions um, about what was going to happen as a result of this, um, this planning process. Uh, it was the most frequently asked question. Uh, what's going to come out of all of this? <laughs> so um, that really is the layout of the report. Um, and, and there's a couple of things that I think um, I want to be sure about with you. Um, with the quotations, if there's anybody um, on this Zoom that is not comfortable with me sharing um, a quotation from you, I did try to be very mindful um, about not making it obvious who you were. Um, but if anybody does not feel comfortable about me using a quotation from you, please will you get in touch with me? And um, because I did use a quote from every group, one if not two, um, in the end of the report. Um, and I think the only other thing that I felt I wanted to share with you in terms of the quotes is that, I mean, this is probably not a big deal, but um, whoever transcribed them did it verbatim. 
So there, are, I, I went ahead and took out the uhs and the ums, if there were several of them. <laughs> and so I hope that that's going to be okay. Um, there were some of them where there were quite a few ums, and so I just took that out. But other than that, <laughs> I tried to accurately represent uh, exactly what you said and place it within a framework that I feel um, laid out in this way. I can't, I can't be sure one way or another, but I, I'm hoping that if these words haven't been heard for some reason or understood, they've been said. Um, I'm not gonna say this is gonna solve it all, but I just was trying to figure out any way I could to present this information to be understood and heard so we can move forward, um, which is my key goal in writing this report. Um, so I think that's really the summary of, of what I did with this report. Um, does anybody have any other questions about that piece of it before you can ask more of your um, project level questions uh, to others? But does anybody have any questions specifically about the report? I joined in late. I'm sorry, my name is Kaysen Suggs. I'm, with, I'm an athlete at the University of Missouri. I joined Hi. in the meeting late, so I missed the, exactly what the report was on. Could you give just a summary again of just like what the report stood for, what it went over? Um, I took, uh, I analyzed interview data that came from all of the group meetings and felt that um, at least I felt it was my responsibility to present this information in a report that would be usable, uh, that would lead be the easiest to use in action planning and, and community work moving forward and less about a study about what everybody said and everybody was doing. I wanted to put it into a framework that could get things rolling. Uh, and so the main purpose of the report is to kind of set up all of the interview findings with the core root cause of the issue being systemic racial inequity. And that being a core issue, being able to then make equity the solution uh, rather than it becoming something else, some other topic. Uh, let's just bring this right to the front. Uh, and I feel that when the interview findings were plugged into that framework, they lit right up because it is the core issue. Um, and so that um, was a really important piece of this analysis, but I hope it's a blueprint to just move forward uh, in doing the work. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Thank you. Sure. Um, and Anthony Stanton raised his hand, so I think he has a question. Mm -hmm. So you can go ahead, Anthony. Oh, okay. Can you hear me? <laughs> yep. Okay. Um, I feel that maybe we're not asking the right questions. I don't think that we're... The underlying feeling I have in, in my experience in dealing with policy is that you have to ask the right questions because you'll get answers to what you ask. You won't get anything more or anything less than that. I feel like we, we either, I, I don't know, me as a group or maybe the facilitators of this group can help us. The questions we need to be asking are relating, again, I get back to accountability. Mm -hmm. um, I keep bringing up this Graham's Law thing, and I'm not well versed in it, but I know it is instrumental in dealing with cop citizen interactions and accountability to their actions. Um, so we don't talk about how the court addresses police issues, police incidents, then I don't think that we're going to get the answers we need. We're, you know, we have all this data. This is great. I'm, I'm a science guy. This is like soft data. This this is not, this is um, 
Like I deal with a lot of kids. So this is how to tie a tie. This is how to dress nice. This isn't the meat and potatoes of where we really need to get at. What we need to get at is the, the, the interaction between police, the justice system, and its results when it, when, it, when it comes to police accountability, good or bad. We're, we're, we're not there. We're still on soft stuff. We need to get, and maybe we're not asking the right questions. Maybe the host can help us. I think that, you know, this, this is great information. Like I said, this is information they already have. They may not be using it the way that we're using it. They know where these incidents are. They know where free and reduced lunch uh, um, citizens are. They know all of this. I'm, I work with affordable housing. We use the same, the same data. Everybody has this data. But what we don't have are where police incidents happening. Where is that mapped at? Where are, you know, let's see what some patterns happen with that. Where do we have, you know, do we have a map of police stops and frequencies? Do we have that mapped out? Do we have, you know, that kind of stuff? And then we can get into, you know, like I said, a map of incidents that have occurred in the past, I don't know, as far as the data can carry us. And mapping that out may also help. But until we really start asking the questions and digging into the relationship between the justice system, the judicial, and the enforcement part, and how those two interact and how they're held accountable to each other and to the citizens, we're just we're just touching on the soft stuff. And and that's not that's not why these people that's not why people are protesting around the world. Those are those are those are those are given an aspirin. They're not. They're not. Mm-hmm. They're not solving. They're not solving the disease. We're not curing the disease. We're just curing the symptoms. We need to get to the disease, and the disease is that again. Accountability relationship between justice system enforcement and citizens, and how that triangle works. And that's what's broken. That triangle is broken for us. You know what I'm saying? In particular, brown and black. That's where we need to be at. And so how do we get there? Do we need that? How does that, how does this report reflect that? And where do we need to go from here to get the report to get where we need that to be? Well, and, and I, I agree with you wholeheartedly. Uh, and I don't know if I included it in this section of it, but I did include a, uh, draft up a data agenda for the police department uh, to begin tracking these types of metrics uh, because you're not going to be able to see um, what's really going on out there. I am sharing the maps that are available in that, in that particular uh, arena so that people can say, what about these other maps? What about, you know, so this is supposed to be setting up to generate exactly these kinds of discussions. My uh, view would be that there would be some kind of um, topics that break out of this. Um, I feel a little bit, this is just a really, this part of this is kind of weird for me because you haven't seen it all. Um, but there is definitely a focus on that uh, because it's not necessarily being collected in a systematic way. Um, and I think also um, to, to another point where while you're saying is obviously really important to why the protesters, what the protesters are talking about, what's going on in that particular arena, there were a lot of people providing feedback saying that there are these other structural inequities that are, are a problem too. And my question is, if we all have these maps, why aren't they changing? Why, 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 why do we know where all the free and reduced lunch schools are year after year? How do we know? I mean, if they're not, if it's not working and it is, and it's the, the source of inequity, why aren't those maps changing? If we already, having the maps doesn't, doesn't change anything. We, we need to start allocating resources differently. And that's another piece of this that was brought, brought up by interviewees. Yeah. Um, so I think it's all of these things, just maybe not the same groups, yeah. you know, doing, doing the work maybe even, I don't know. 
And so I received a question and it asked, who receives the final report to begin implementing action? The project manager, somebody want to answer that? Well, yeah, we're going to throw that now to the Carlin, the deputy yeah. city manager. So first I want to thank everybody for participating in this process. Uh, you know, it's, when we, when we started this process and we've, we've met a lot of um, you know, interesting people, we've heard stories that have made us smile, some that have made us cry. And it, it's the fact that everyone's been honest about how they feel about what's going on in this community and what, they, what they're seeing out in the world. Uh, so like Mr. Stanton said, you know, and we have this triangle and where, where, where are we going and where do we start? So, I mean, the first thing we started with were these interviews. And we interviewed 20, we had 25 different meetings. I think we met with 72 different people and we all heard stories. We heard, you know, your concerns, your complaints, your criticism, and, and some praises. And, and it, it's going allow us to, you know, take all that information and synthesize it into here's what some of the community members are saying uh our first step is october 19th we're going to go to the city council we're going to give this report we're going to say here's what this group of interviewees these stakeholders these community members these community leaders here's what they're saying about our community here's what they're saying about the concerns about the police department here's what they're concerned about concerns about how things are being administrated and from that step, yeah. I would I, I hope that you know a lot of you will come to the meeting, be part of it. You know, there will be opportunity for you to speak to the council and tell them your thoughts. And, and you know that the next step is to take this to other community partners and other stakeholders and, and kind of grow our base and develop an action plan. And you know, we'll develop a plan that'll be actionable that we actually can put into place. And th throughout this process, it's not going to be one and done. It's not, you know, if this was easy, this, this would have been done a long time ago. It's about the work and it's about hard work. And I think, you know, I know that I'm part of wanting to see change occur. You no, know, I, I took the job on because I want to see positive things happen. And I don't, I don't take jobs lightly. And I, I'm at a point in my career where you, know, you wanna do things that are gonna be impactful. And I think we can do that here. But it, it is a lot of work. It is, it's gonna be a lot more meetings. It's gonna be a, a lot more discussions and hold us accountable. You know, it's, it's okay to say, hey guys, you got this wrong. You need to look over here. Uh, the things that Mr. Stadden brought up about some of the things that maybe we should be looking at in the police department. Well, let's, let's take a look at that. And it's, it's about an open and honest conversation. And it's, it's not one and done. It's not an easy fix. And so, like I said, the first meeting is October 19th. Come to the council meeting. Let us know what your thoughts are. Uh, from that report, let's develop a plan. And we're going to develop a plan together. And we want all of you to be part of that. And I think there was a question about, are we going to interview police officers? Yes. Now, ideally, we should we want to interview police officers. We want to hear their thoughts as well, and include them in the process. Uh, if there's questions generally on what's going on, I'll try to answer them. I, I don't have all the answers, but I'll have the answers that I can answer. Yeah. And, and Sterling, Sterling Brown had his hand raised, so if he wanted to speak. Um, I, I, I'm hoping that I am the only one that is wondering what the remaining 11 pages of the report mm -hmm. that you're going to present on the 19th are. It would seem to me, and that question is particularly germane, because uh, whomever is sitting upon that dais is going to be taking that report in one way or another pretty seriously. So I'm wondering as, as we are, I mean, first of all, this chat room, folks, is a, is a goldmine for uh, significant and pertinent questions. Um, 
I, I just, I, I'm really concerned that if your task, Ms. Croner, is to be, as you said, our voice, I have not heard enough of what our voice is going to be as it's presented. Um, I have about 400 questions. Go ahead and mute me again. Uh, I'd like to also add to that afterward. Um, I don't want to interrupt and I still want to focus on your question, which is what's the, um, the next, can everyone hear me also? Just making sure. Yes, we can hear you. So I don't want to um, disrupt from your question, Mr. Sterling Brown, because that's a great question too, but I just want to make the claim um, and note, once again, my name is Kason Suggs. I'm a part of the Black Student Athlete Association of Mizzou. I'm a student athlete. Um, since we've had these interviews, and I was a part of one of the, the earlier ones, and I'm happy that we did, and we got to share our thoughts, and it was me and a bunch of other student athletes, we got to share how we, how we felt, and uh, I'm assuming other interviews look like the ones that we were on. And you have this report, and you have this uh, connection of emotions and stories and different viewpoints and true and honest opinions and true and honest statements of events that happen. Mm -hmm. I do think that it's important that um, maybe in the October 19th meeting, sure, sure, we come in and we share a little bit more and we talk a little bit more and we, and we talk about how we feel. We kind of back up our claims, maybe if we go to that one. But I do feel that what we cannot have is three or four more interview meetings because speaking as a black man, it is difficult for me to speak on things that I've seen and been through in my experience. And I don't feel like it's fair to me to have to go through the interview process six times to say the same thing again. Does that make sense? And I only say that because um, I've had different people from all different arenas, but all linked on the same issue is that we feel like we're in a lot of conversations and we feel like we are really giving ourselves in these conversations. For me, I was sharing true and traumatic stories that I've been through, right? And I'm comfortable sharing those stories, but I do have a limit. And I do feel like if I'm gonna share these true and traumatic stories along with everyone else in the chat who's been sharing their stories, after we've done that, they've been handled and they've been told. So one thing that I, I, I hope and I uh, don't want to see is four or five more meetings where we have to tell our stories again because now they've been told, you know, now we have them, they're written down, um, they're collected, they're in the paperwork, the stories have been said. So after the 19th meeting, which for long, I don't know if I can make it, um, just my schedule, athlete, school, a lot's going on. But if I can make it, I'll be there and I'll talk. But after that one, I feel like the story time, the interview questions, those are done. Those are handled. And then we move to the action steps. Mm -hmm. And it should be action steps from there forward. Because the interviews have been written down. My story is still my story. And it's the same story today as it's as going to be tomorrow. And if you ask me in a different way, I'm going to say the same story. It's going to hurt more if you ask me more, you know? So I feel like once we've shared our stories and we've told our experiences and we've been through that, we've gotten that process done, that's that. And then we go to the action steps. And then from the action steps, we keep moving there. Um, that's really important to me because it is difficult to share those stories. This is trauma. This is trauma. It's like reopening a wound every time, truthfully. So it's really important that the reason why we are very concerned about these action steps and what happens next is because to be in these meetings and to give that example and to explain what we've been through in such detail, um, it can be a lot. And if we're giving that much of ourselves, we want to see that much given to the action steps. So I do believe that after the October 19th meeting, it's time for the action steps. And we can proceed with those in the interviews. They're done. Thank you. I'm just going to respond to you, Casey. What, what a response. And so true. And, uh, and I'm not acting. You know, I feel you. I feel you. And I agree. That's all I have to say. Um, we're looking for action and thank you for having the courage to say what you just said. Thank you. Can I, can I add on, Kaysen? So what's going can, can I just jump in, Sterling, and then you can go. So Kaysen, thank you so much for saying that. And I'm going to add on one thing that one of the things that Dr. Croner did was um, a lit review. She not only looked at your data, but she looked at the data going back to 1996, the, the first mayor's task force, and every other listening tour and et cetera, et cetera, across time. And we know there have been too many of them. And the sad truth um, is, and I don't mean for this to be salt in, in uh, the wound, 
But the sad truth is that your stories, your experiences, the, the, the data hasn't changed measurably over time. And so we know that 20, for 24 years, you have been saying to the city the same thing. And that 2020 is the time that that needs to stop. And so we are aligned with you as consultants in that, in that way. And, and that will be our message to the city. DeCarlin knows that. Um, the chief knows that. The lieutenant knows that that um, we, we will be fervently um, arguing for resources, the allocation of resources to move this project from talk to action. Amazing, yes, that's, that's the goal. Action needs to, it needs to begin now. Because like as you said, um, things have not changed. And honestly, you didn't have to tell me that for me to I, probably put two together. I, um, I, know, I know I didn't have to tell you that. I'm, I'm telling you all your lived experience. I, I, and I don't mean to sound like I am telling you. I'm telling you about the reports, really, and the findings of the reports. All is good. I'm just hoping that that, uh, that statement, I don't know if it had been said before, but it, it did need to be stated. And I, uh, as long as that's understood, I'm glad it's stated. But I do know that um, Storm Brown had a question, too, and I don't want to cut it. I will say that um, Brittany Hughes had her hand raised first, and then Sterling can go again if he has more comments. So Brittany, you can unmute yourself. Yeah, uh, so I feel like what I hear people speak, like what I'm hearing people speak to and like what I don't think that what we're doing now in the conversation that we are having is gonna achieve is that it's a conversation about power, right? Folks who aren't in positions of power right now are trying to figure out how we mobilize and organize our power. And I'm not sure how that power is gonna contend with power that elected officials have, if everybody is white in a position of power, if folks clearly don't have a lens around race that is needed to really have these conversations. So no matter how strong Crystal's work is, what good does it do to present it to a board of folks who are beholden to a system of white supremacy? And so like, what are we really doing here? And what does this work mean if the root issue is that the people the people who are making these decisions don't have the orientation around race that they need. Um, and that's not even just the, the police department, that's you know, uh, some of our city staff and our city council as well. So I guess I'm wondering how does the report um, support that work? Is, are there recommendations for um, some uh, trainings um, around race and white supremacy in the systems of America and the institution of policing that are going to be recommendations in this report. How do we make sure those trainings are facilitated by people who don't have ties with our city and like people who actually do this for a living um, and people we can put um, give a platform and put money in their pockets um, to help boost the work that they're doing. Um, and so yeah, I guess this all comes down to power and what y'all saying sound really good, but it's not helping us build none of it. Um, and I know that to be true because this conversation has been going on since before I was born uh, and before I moved to Columbia. So like, how is this helping us build and how are we actually giving the people more than just a platform and more than an opportunity to pimp our pain and our oppression, but like actually giving people um, a sense of power that they feel like they can actually wield and wield strongly and wield boldly outside of even collective spaces that the city is putting together. Brittany, excellent question. And I'm going to take that question. And I'm going to tell you uh, that I was in the process and David Smith is the lawyer on your side now, but I used to be the lawyer in 1998 on your side. So I'm going to break the disclosure to you. So I used to represent the citizens, okay? Um, this is a process to help us build capacity um, that was suggested by me because I've used it to build capacity of people of color, particularly black people and disenfranchised people and other situations. And this builds us to utilize this model against communities in power 
to empower us to build together and collectively. And so that's why we did the individual processes so that we could call and come together with power to say, and then why we had Crystal dig back into those reports that say the same thing, to come with force and reality, which uh, I think the team will tell you that I do while I sit here nicely with candor and talk here. But uh, this is real for me, just as real as for you, uh, that I suffer these same traumas and have the same stories. So uh, I'm not here to play games and I am invested with these stakeholders that aren't here to play games. We are planning to make change and we need you to make change, which is why we're here. We're having to work in a process that is uh, why we all know systemic racism is there. And sometimes we have to work through those channels, but please let you know that you're getting as much candor as I can give you. And we're working through and we're gonna need you to do the action. Uh, we tried to build in that it is your leadership that is going to lead these processes, okay? And I know it doesn't feel like that now because you hear the same old crap every day, but this is the year of power and people taking power. And this is this group's time to take power in this city. And this is what we're doing and you have the right people leading your group and you are the right people in this group to do this and to voice your concerns. And I can tell you the quotes are cutting, that this report is different than any other report. We're not feeling it full of deep data. We're filling it full of action and saying these are the things you must do with this protocol. Now, sadly, we're restricted by some limitations, but there won't be any limitations once you take over this process. So we're building a house for you to take over. Now we need you to build the walls with us and to put this two by fours up and all of that. You're not seeing that right now, but you've given us what we need for the initial money to get that going, if you will. And then you're gonna build this house, each and every one of you. And that's what I'm trying to tell you. And that's what we're trying to tell you because we're looking to you to lead this process. And we've taken your words and stuff to help do that. And so that's what we're saying to you now. And if you can just work with us a little longer, we're not out to pawn anybody, definitely not me, because uh, this is important for us to make these changes. And we can do this collectively together. So just work with us a little longer. You will see, and you will see the shift, and this is not a one and done, or I would not have signed on here uh, at all and, and do this to uh, people that I love. You know, my work centers around and has centered around brown and black people for several decades. Uh, and it is important that you understand that. And actually I don't partner with people that do that. And so there will be change, but we need you to make that change. And without you, you have more power than you think. And that's why we're doing this process. And I want you to know that. I hear what you're saying, but I'm asking people who have no trust and no relation, authentic relationship to buy into something that doesn't feel realistic to buy into because of what, what everybody has experienced. And I it very do. much feels like, uh, recreating a new table with the master's tools and I don't think anybody is necessarily here for that you know what I mean process I'm... process can be um reimagined this could go faster if we push faster for it to be different and I guess I'm just wondering why are we using the same processes with a little tweak no shade to you crystal because you know I love you and you just doing what you were asked to do but why are we why are we recreating something that we know does not work in the confines in which we're trying to do it. What is the new process that can be adopted? What are the things that we can 
push on when they're telling us to slow it down that makes this look different than what it has before. I feel like everybody has asked a version of that, but there hasn't really been an answer to that. So how, how is this different? I'm on this call because I'm interested in knowing how that looks different. And so I'm either going to leave this call feeling bought into what y'all are doing and saying that Faith Voices is going to rock with what y'all are doing, or I'm going to leave this call and be like, you know what, that's not for us. We're going to organize a different way. And so what are you guys offering us right now that makes us feel like we want to buy into this process? What, what, is, the, what is the trust in the relationship that when I get off this call, I know that y'all got me and y'all got my people? Because it's not just us that we're bringing into this room. It's other people and other experiences. And it, I just don't feel like there's clarity clarity in it. And I'm not trying to tell you, Kyler, but like, I'm sensitive about my shit because this means something to me. You know what oh, I mean? Oh, yeah. I hear you. I hear you. Well, should you leave, I want to talk to you one-on-one. -on -one. I'll be doing that more with people. So should you decide to leave, let's have a one-on-one. -on -one because I want you to see who I am for real and uh, talk with me, okay? Uh, and we can have a one-on-one because -on -one. I don't want anybody to walk away from this process without meeting me personally and having a one-on-one -on -one and knowing me and knowing what I do and uh, that I don't do anything that's not for real, okay? So, all right. So I think we're gonna be meeting for lunch, Brittany. Okay, on you, girl. No, just kidding. <laughs> but uh, yeah, let's do that because I'm sincere uh, and so are my colleagues. And so uh, we have to work this process together and I totally get why you have no trust. Uh, and so I'm asking you to work with us. So, and that's hey, all. Um, so we Go ahead. Jim. We have um, some questions from people. So in order, um, we have Kendra will go first, then Anthony, and then Tracy, and then Sean, um, if who's raised their hand. So Kendra, if you wanted to unmute and ask your question. I just wanted to uh, piggyback off of what um, Brittany said. I do agree that uh, we're not convinced. I know I'm not. And as she stated, when we leave this uh, meeting, we do want to feel that when you guys go and you're not in front of us, that you represent us the way we need to be represented in those meetings because we aren't there. And to have an individual meeting with Brittany means to have an individual meeting with every single person. So, uh, because I think we all have something individually to say. So it isn't any difference than us meeting like this, but to each his own. But when you go into those meetings, I want to feel comfortable and I want to feel that I trust that you will uh, represent that I'm saying all of my and all of my issues the way that I am actually stating them here. Uh, when we're not there, we don't really know how you're representing us because the way you, even just in, in listening to you, it's like you're reading a script. Even though you may be honestly speaking from your heart, I just don't believe it. So I would like, I mean, on October 19th, I am looking for some major, I mean, shaking and moving of, 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 of new and, 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 and equity challenging things and accountability for you guys as well. So I, I mean, I'm the framework, the demographics, the guidelines, the, all of the awesome stuff that we're talking about. I really want to see something happening um, come October 19th, something different. So that's all I want to say. Uh, and then Anthony. Mr. Satan, I think you're muted still. Okay, can you hear me? I got a new computer. I'm trying to figure it out. Uh, 
first statement, I, I'm a PNZ commissioner, and I deal with these kind of reports every other week, staff reports, all that kind of stuff. What catches our eye is the action and recommendations, primarily. Stats and all that stuff's good, but we're looking for the recommendations from staff, and we're looking for, you know, the, the concrete data. I really believe we have one shot. I feel if we don't hit it on the 19th in the right direction, it's going to go in the world of other reports. Um, number two, I think that policy to address everybody's concerns, and this is kind of why I'm trying to really, I think if this is not your scope in this project, we need to rethink the next phase in the, the, the scope of your, of your duties. I think our scope needs to be about policy. We need the lawyer brains. We need, the, we need those brains because anything else doesn't matter. Resolutions, ordinances, none of that matters if you don't have the nuts and bolts policies at the police and city level. I know there's going to be obstacles as far as state and federal laws that we may not be able to adjust, but whatever we can do on the policy level from the city perspective, as far as we can take that is what we need to do because policy is devoid of personnel. The reason why and I'm, I'm addressing some of my other colleagues on this call, why, why is it now? Why is this happening now? It's happening now because we have the right staff. We have the right city staff and the right things, the right people in the right places right now. That doesn't last forever. The administration that we have and the staff and personnel that we have, and the people on this call are in this moment. This moment will not last. So, but policy does. So if you take this time and you work policy, policy is devoid of personnel. You don't even have to believe in what you're doing to follow policy. So if all of us were to disappear tomorrow, but we have good policy in place, the policy is the roadmap, you follow the policy, period. If you believe in it or not, if you like it or not, we do it all in our jobs every day. Policy is what matters. It's almost like we need a Brown versus Board of Education moment. We need the lawyers. We need that language. We need that push. We need that now. All this other stuff, like I said earlier, is great. It's lovely, but they already have that. They just use it different. We need policy, accountability, accountability policy. We need policies that are in the books, that are the blueprints for how future cops, future administrators, future city managers, planners, all of that move from this point on. We need a Brown versus board. We need something like that. That's what we need. And if, if the 19th meeting, if this doesn't fit the milestones that you have to meet, you know, and I'm a, I'm, and I'm a businessman too, if this doesn't meet the milestones you need to meet to get paid, I understand that. But the bottom line is the city council is going to be looking for recommendations from staff on this report and future actions. That's what they're going to read when it all boils down. And one of those actions has to be, or we're wasting our time, policy. If you want to take this group right here and we help you build policy, that's what needs to happen. If we're not talking policy and we're not talking systematic change in everyday operations, Policy, accountability, then we're wasting our time. And that needs to be in that report that we're moving towards policy change. It is. It's in there. So, uh, and, and so um, I, I definitely appreciate that. And that's in that institutional level, right? So not, uh, I lay out specific policies based on what you, you, you all have recommended. Recruitment retention, disciplinary policies, um, policies and practices out in the feet, out, I don't know how, what the right word is to use there, out on the street. Um, and so, yes, that, nothing's gonna change if we don't have that. So there's processes, there's policy uh, addressed in this. Um, and so I really appreciate that. 
um, and I don't feel defensive about any of this. I'm just letting you know so you under you know that it, it is in there. Uh, but I don't feel defensive about any of this, you guys. Um, I understand what you're saying. All right, and then now we have Tracy and then Sean, James, and Chad. So I, I just want to make sure, Sterling, did you get an opportunity to speak? Because I thought that you were coming up, and I don't want to step in front of you if you were in line. Okay. So we've been talking about policy and people, and I'm going to go back to Brittany's point about power. Um, and Anthony said something about Brown versus the Board of Education. So one thing that the Brown decision didn't do was deal with power. And it also did not deal with embedded ideology that people have in their heads about black people. We have not been able to fix that. The elephant in the middle of the room is the fact that we have a police department, in my opinion, that is anti-black and that they have policies that we keep talking about that prohibit them from being held accountable. And we've been having a conversation about community policing since I don't know when. And we, we only just recently got community outreach units just a few weeks ago. We've been going round and round on this. So we do have to have a conversation about power. We have to have a conversation about when uh, practices happen and we cannot get answers. We don't have transparency. And I also am concerned that the police department rank and file, I don't like it that Mike Huster gets to come to these meetings and then he gets to go talk to the chief and whoever else in the police department, but the officers are not represented here. And our concern is the way that they implement and enact policy, the way that they engage and treat us as human beings in the community. And that's the thing that we haven't been able to solve. So the maps, none of that stuff matters. What matters is why do our officers feel the way that they do about our community? There's a great dissertation, it's called Our Black Children, The Evolution of Black, black Space, and we are still acting, the people in power act like they have 19th century mentality. That's the truth. And until we can deal with that. So I'm all for disbanding the police department if they want to stay thinking like they're in the 19th century because they're not helping us. So we can deal with policy, but if everybody thinks like they uh, came from the 19th century, we're fucked. And that's been the big problem. And nothing in this deals with that power dynamic. Our city manager needs to grow up a little bit more and learn some history. That's a fact, right? That includes a lot of people at City Hall. They don't understand that many of their policies are segregationist oriented, even down to the situation we have right now with our utility bills. That is a segregationist outcome, right? So last thing, one of my biggest concerns about this from the very beginning was the process and the protocol. And I would have liked it instead of defining a process behind our backs, knowing that all of us are working on this, that if you would to come to us all in advance before you wrote your proposal and before you hired your consultants to ask what we wanted. And we would have told you then that we have a power dynamic problem in Colombia so that we would not be sitting here tonight looking at maps and looking at data that we've seen ad nauseum. So it's gotta be power. It is to have to be the right people. That's great. If everyone thinks that we have the right people in the right place right now, that's great. But if we're not talking about power and we're not talking about the attitudes, right? And the ideologies of the people in power, we're not gonna get anywhere. Uh, Sean. Yeah. Hey, good evening. Sorry. I'm in a car watching my son, foot, my son's football practice. So that's why my face isn't being shown. Um, before I go on my hopefully quick tangent, I want to thank Mr. Uh, Broadus Kyler for his words on power and kind of our window we have in this conversation. I do want to thank as well um, uh, Ms. Croner for, for the data, because we know the data does, it, it moves policy. It has to move policy and we need those numbers to mean something. And it just so happens that, you know, our black and brown people are those numbers. Um, but from hearing the questions, I, I do want to challenge everybody in this room, be it the city, CPD and the community, that we have to continue this conversation. But not only that, we need to create our seat at the table. So when we're talking about power and what City Hall is doing and what we don't know as a community, we have to place ourselves in that position of power. And the conversation doesn't end. I'm hearing the date October 19th. The conversation doesn't end after October 19th. And the biggest thing, I, I don't have a question, but I have a recommendation after this conversation or an action item, is that we create 
a standing committee or a board at the city council level that deals particularly with the equity or inequities in our community, be it policing, housing, which was shown to us, um, you know, schooling, you name it, health, health is a big issue to that too when it comes to inequities, but that that from this conversation, we create a smaller group from the, from, you know, the faces in this room that we small create this, this board. And if it already exists, I apologize. But if not, we need to create our own seat, our own board, our own commission on equity in Columbia. So that's my biggest thing is that I'm throwing a recommendation out there that we do that. Um. And then really fast, sorry, I'm going to have um, Kason go because he said go off to class um, and then we'll get to Chad and then James. Yes, I apologize for cutting the line, but um, I have early morning class and I have homework I have to do. So I, I have to go after this, even though I'd love to stay. But I want to um, say a quick comment, two quick comments, um, and then I'll head out. Um, the first one is kind of like going off of or backing up what everyone else has been saying uh, and understanding that we have a situation here that is unique and different than situations of the past. Not for Black people, but like just other situations going on. This one for Black people is different than other ones. And um, I say that to say uh, a lot of times for conversations like these, we get responses similar to um, if someone was talking about city reform in a different way that is not racially motivated. But I think it's important to understand that these two conversations are different. Um, for example, if I was uh, an ER worker right in a hospital and I have a woman who uh, broke her leg and she's coming through the door, she broke her leg, it's like, oh my goodness, it's bad, right? But then we have another woman who comes in who has not only broken her leg, but is also um, in labor and about to deliver a baby. Um, it's reasonable for us to look at the woman in labor see the baby needing to be delivered, delivering the baby and then handling the leg as well. Um, because in that scenario, you read, the, uh, you read what's happening, you read the importance of the situation, in this case, a baby, right, a new life. Um, and you understand that we need to take this scenario as is, and we might need to push aside the other one for the moment just to make sure this scenario is handed, handled. And I feel like a lot of times policies revolving around racial uh, injustice and inequity um, we view both women not only the same, um, but we also will look at the woman with just the broken leg who is not pregnant and take her first. And I feel like that can be an issue. Um, how do I relate that back to what's going on here? In this case, I say the action steps that need to be taken, and um, I agree with really everything that's been said, but the action steps that need to be taken need to be taken with a different mindset, a different perspective. Um, some of these things need to be handled in the moment. For example, we may have a situation where we're trying to handle something else that's going on with racial injustice, but if the people are saying that um, the police are the issue, then the police issue needs to be handled first. In the same way that this lady has a broken leg, but is also in labor. So it's kind of understood that we're gonna handle the baby before we handle the leg. We're in a specific situation that's different and it needs to be handled in that way. And when you go to this meeting in October, you can quote me, you can use this verbatim, you can play them back this speech, go ahead. I don't know if I can be there or not. If I can't, feel free. But this is a very specific situation that is, needs to be handled as it is. And I feel like a lot of times we kind of put racial injustice and systemic issues with racism in the same category as like parking tickets. But they're not the same, you know. They're both police policies that may need to be adjusted in some way or whatever. But they're not the same. We're looking at two different situations, and I feel like what's going on here and the things that people are mentioning, some of them need to be taken into consideration now, and some of them need to be acted on now. And I know that there's a process, and I don't know the full process, but I understand that some things need to be handled more immediately than others, and it's important that we adjust the situation and react to that in the same way as you would in that hospital situation. If we saw the hospital situation and we saw someone say, hold on to the pregnant woman and just took the other woman, we don't doesn't matter where you are, because you don't understand the importance of one situation over the other one. You understand that maybe one situation is more dire than the other one. And so it's important to look at that other situation first. And I feel for these ones, these need to be handled first. And there's certain things that are going on today in the, in the streets right now that need to be handled first. 
And if we kind of put them in one giant category as like black issues or racial issues that need to be handled, you know, eventually as time gets by, when we address it, when we get there, the baby never gets delivered. Maybe it dies. You see what I'm saying? Um, on another note, uh, I hear a lot of um, I understands and a lot of uh, I, I really understand. I know, I know what you're saying. I know what you're feeling. This is just on a personal thing. And I don't mean to, to call out anyone any, in specific, but it's just something that I feel when I hear that. Um, I personally would prefer someone saying, someone who's not of color saying, I hear you versus I understand. Because to me, when I hear understand, it's as if I'm being told that you have been through the situation that I have. And that is not the case. In the same way that if, you know, a woman came up to me and she was um, pregnant, <laughs> another very same example, I couldn't be like, oh yeah, I understand my stomach hurts sometimes. <laughs> you know, like I don't, like that doesn't make sense. But I could hear her though and hear her experience and be like, oh, I, I hear you. I don't know what you're going through on your own. Couldn't even say, could never be in that position but I hear you and we're gonna respond accordingly to that situation too. And I think it's really important how we handle these situations and to understand the, the situation for what it is, why it's important that it's immediate, why it's important that we act now, why it's important that, why what we're saying is so straightforward. Um, Cause it is that level of importance. It's that level of threat, not only to black people, but our community because the longer that we, as like using the example again, the longer we put the woman who's clearly needs more assistance back, the more at risk we put the people, the person in that position. And we don't know what comes after that, but we know it's not positive. So it's very important that we handle the appropriate situation first. And in these cases, it needs to be handled as immediately as possible for the sake of our community and the people in it. Not only for me now, I'm a college student, I'm a junior, I'm gonna graduate. I'm, I'm probably graduate. So I may not be here for the long standing and the longevity of this community because I care about it. These things need to be handled now. And that's what I have to say. Um, I hate to leave on that note, but I do have to go. Thank you guys all for allowing me to speak. And uh, hopefully I can be there for October 19th. I'll see you guys. Thank you, Kason. Uh, Chad, if you wanted to go now. Chad, we can't hear you. James, if you wanted to go while we're waiting on Chad, Mr. Witt. Yeah, I'll go ahead. I'll be very, very brief. I got a bad connection. So yeah, if you can't hear me, just, just kind of raise your hand. Uh, but what I wanted to say is that uh, we've had a lot of good comments uh, tonight uh, from, the, from the group and it's very, very appreciated. Uh, uh, the issue of power has come up and we need to identify, you know, who the power is that we're talking about. Uh, what we've done is gotten together a number of uh, uh, minorities for this study, you know, and that's a power base in itself. And we have our opinions about what we need to do, you know, in terms of changing, you know, the, you know, the police uh, organization. I, I think uh, prior to dealing with policies and procedures, uh, we have a cultural issue uh, that, that we need to deal with. And I think the biggest issue is how do we change the culture? You know, if you know anything about major corporations or anything like that, uh, it's the culture of the organization and not the policies and the procedures that make these uh, organizations effective. Uh, policing all over the country is a major, major organization. Uh, and until we learn how to, how to deal with the culture of it, uh, uh, a lot of what we're talking about uh, isn't gonna change and it hasn't changed for, you know, 400 years. It's been pretty much the same thing. I think if you look at the power base, you know, uh, the police is obviously a big time power base that the council has to deal with, uh, just like they have to deal with, uh, with black folks. Uh, the other power base, I, I see three power bases. Uh, we have black folks or minorities. We have the, the police organization 
and we have white people, you know. And those are the big three power bases that, that, that I'm looking at for these kinds of issues. And until we understand what the perspective of each one of those power bases and how they differ, and, you know, we're, we're going to have a very difficult time, you know, making, making real progress. I mean, this study that we've done needs to be done, you know, with the police by themselves and a report done that shows their perspective of how they deal with uh, black folks. And we need, we need white people to, you know, a group of white people to sit down and go through the same thing. You know, studies have shown that there's a vast difference in terms of perspective, in terms of police and in terms of whites and in terms of black and how, how black people are treated. And until these divergent perspectives are dealt with at the table at the same time, uh, I think that we're going to have a difficult time making progress. Uh, that's why we've, we've had some, uh, you know, people that have dealt with these kinds of situations before where we put together a study primarily based on what, you know, black people think and they go nowhere, you know, because behind the scenes, the other power bases can get their fingers on it and give their opinions, not to us, but to city councils and mayors and, you know, people like that, that will be voting and making the, you know, the, uh, the changes and it kind of dies on the vine or, or the study gets put on the shelf somewhere and, and never implemented. Until all three power bases are at the table together talking about their different opinions in terms of, of how they look at this situation, um, and then we can't pinpoint the areas that we maybe agree on and areas that need to be changed and some kind of solutions where all three power bases can, can come to an agreement in terms of what changes can be made. And that addresses, that will address the culture changes that are necessary, which will lead uh, to the policies and procedure changes that will be effective. So that's just my thought. Got it. Yeah, I'm done. Running yet? Uh, I think so, can you hear me? Okay. <laughs> little tech challenge that's always great um I, I just want to make sure that in the um discussion we're having and, and, and first of all i want to say like um i all, all the comments that are i think are are pretty fantastic and everybody has very legitimate points and um this has all been presented as part of the uh interview process the, the thing that i'm i'm concerned with particularly is like the scope and scale of what we're doing here especially if you're using our feedback to justify um, what kind of budgetary or what kind of support you're looking for from the city. Um, and, and again, I understand we have to pick and choose um, where we focus our resources. But if we're looking at the Columbia Police Department solely from within the, um, from the perspective of their particular policy, their particular practices, um, I can tell you it's going to be a nightmare. I work on um, the Vehicle Stop Data Committee and um, pretty much like their systems are, it's very difficult to find anything to really uh, be consistently tracked from year to year in a meaningful way. Um, their system, their systemic practices for just data reflection is, is terrible. Um, on top of that, you know, we cannot look at just the police department and their activities unless we're looking at the entire relationship with um, Columbia School to Prison Pipeline. And if you're not thinking that doesn't exist, um, it is very much so a, a current here. You can see the forces at work here. So when we look at the police department, this is how they interact with Columbia Public Schools, their disciplinary data, their school suspension rates, uh, juvenile detention centers, uh, police enforcement when they stop like either traffic violations, they have a direct impact on the next phase of um, keeping our judicial system full of nonviolent low level offenders. And these are all things that apparently can change on a, on a turn of a dime. Um, and I'm, I'm really concerned about this because um, like when COVID first came out, uh, Jeff Jones issued something saying they're going to basically suspend all non-essential operations. So my question is like for the matter of public safety, um, if these are non-essential, then why are we enforcing them to begin with? So, I mean, and, and who's making the call? Who's accountable to say what policies we enforce and what we don't? That hasn't been a conversation. And honestly, if we have a unilateral decision that the chief of police can make as to what he's going to enforce or not, we have a significant problem. And if we're not looking at these relationships in the context of this committee, you're not gonna be able to do anything effectually because you're not looking at the context in which they operate. And we need to go much, much deeper overall. I think, I think that the city cannot really um, fundamentally change itself unless we go through the entire audit process and really dig deep and look at um, 
you know, what we have set up from, from an intensive point of view. Um, so I, I just want to make sure, like, you know, before we try to package this up as like a CPD type thing, um, that it does go bigger and we're going to have to look at some of these other organizations and how they relate to the police department. And I want to make sure that you're taking that to account when you go to make your um, approach to the city and ask for support and, you know, for the scope of what we're doing. Mr. Brown, you had your hand raised. Um, so when we're, when we're talking about, I, I would like first to ask just a, a, I'm gonna ask this quick question and I'd like for uh, Ms. Croner to answer it. And then I'll ask the remainder of, of my, or make the remainder of my comment. What is your vision of what you present on the 19th look like as it stands after this discussion? Has this discussion changed what the 19th looks like for you? What does it look like? What do you present? It has. It has changed. Uh, I don't know if it uh, necessarily changes my thoughts about what the core problem is here, which is structural racism. Uh, but um, in fact, right now, I'm just trying to process what everybody's saying, uh, because this is the point right here. Uh, this is why I didn't want to put something out before we had a chance to, to go over such a complex issue, right? Um, yeah, it would seem to me that in the, the wrangling of that, you're likely going to need this group again before the 19th. <laughs> Um, it, it, it makes it makes me and, and the simple fact that that um, that I got that response from you kind of I mean I, I always at the beginning of this and, and Kyler can speak to it as well um, uh, Carolyn as well I was really dismayed about the structure uh, of this um, we have uh, significant macro level issues that all of us are discussing whereas there are some micro level issues that, that if this group was putting that centralized focus on, then we can start achieving some of those stair steps toward the, the macro level issues that we, we all on this call, regardless of uh, where you're from, how long you've been, where you are, will be able to understand that need to be solved. So when you're hearing some of this frustration about uh, what are we gonna do, you know, what people's urgency to move to that action, maybe as you're taking this step to the 19th on a timeline that we do not know because it's been given and tasked by folks in uh, the, uh, the, the bureaucracy that we don't are, are not privy to, um, while any of those pressures are occurring, they're not allowing for the, the true percolation of problem solving out of a group that does have this much ingrained and culturally thorough power to help move this through the move the needle for Columbia. You know, when we're sitting here talking about what's going to happen on the 19th, I still have not gained a perspective of what the, those people sitting up on the dais are going to feel like they may have to then move to next, what they may feel is coming down the pipeline. Like, where are we talking about? things that are truly tangible that, that were spoken to in these stakeholder meetings um, that I just cannot let, let tonight go without having heard someone else talk about. Where is the recruitment step? What, I was told that there was little to no effort made toward minority recruiting. If that's the case, then training people who are dealing primarily with minorities in conflict situations or any other under the umbrella. Those people are not well equipped at the very baseline if you don't know. And so when we're talking about at the very first portion of this, doing interviews with the uh, current officers, I think it is essential that people from this group are a part of that interview process to gather and garner that data from those police officers. Uh, at, at this point, 
there's, there's some creativity that can be used in how they go about recruiting simply by utilizing some of the people who are here in this forum to interview some of their upcoming police officers. Like, let's, let's really get down to brass tacks, things that we can truly actually affect that are going to set the foundation for the things that we're trying to move forward to. Because this commission, this committee, and I'm not hearing a single thing about revenue flow, is not going to move funds from one part of another for CPD until we are a part of that process. Sitting at a table for a commission and task force that talks about racial equity for the city of Columbia and all of its bureaucratic arms is fantastic and is absolutely necessary. But at this case in point, what we're here for is how do we improve policing and how do we improve the lives of Colombians? How do we feel safe? How do we, can we operate in the, within the five miles of our home without feeling the imminent, the fear of being stopped and not making it to that house? And I feel that constantly, regardless of who the police are, because I don't know any of them and they surely aren't coming to know us. So I, I just, I, I want, I want to feel, and, and Brittany hit the nail so hard on the head, you can see sparks. I want to leave tonight feeling like this, the, these voices, and I'm pointing at the four that I can see right here, and I know Lieutenant Hester's been sitting on um, listening, uh, and, and again, I, I find it disheartening that there's never feedback from Lieutenant Hester unless he's prompted, because that is one of the tumultuous voices that we absolutely don't hear representation from, and, and I know in my stakeholder meeting, I had to ask him directly because that voice is important too. I mean, this is this 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 cannot be left with just this this conversation before the 19th because I'm not trusting that what's going to be presented to them is nothing but is going to upset me. Uh, the cultural shift uh, that we were talking about and the power shift come from having people not just that look like us but actually represent and carry that message that it can truly help this entire organization assimilate and integrate so that it can adapt and change. And you can't do those, you can't change anything unless you have an assimilation. So yeah, Tracy, you just said it and I saw it pop up there, you might have just reached and took about, but a cultural transformation that absolutely starts at the top. And we are, we're, we're not addressing very simple issues this police union, and I am, huh, I'm a union guy, but this police union being led by an, a, a very uh, out racist and still not giving credence to the voice of the people who the administration has to represent, they're not, they're, they're not hearing this message. They're not here. And I, don't, I would willingly hope and trust that a Lieutenant Hester would carry that, that they would be a part of this process. I haven't seen any of them in those stakeholder meetings. So, and I, I, I messaged this to Kyler before, and yes, man, just continue to just build and build as we've been sitting here. But this feels like a big, fine cup of warm, fuzzy waste of time. And I don't want it to feel that way. So, I mean, as long as you all are willing to sit here and, and, and articulate what the 19th looks like, and then the next step from there, I know we got a lot of work to do in the forming of them, but what recommendations are being made? Because that just has not been addressed. Tyler, do you want to jump in? Yeah. Um, Sterling, thank you, and thank everybody for the com comments. So this is about community engagement and empowerment. And Sterling, thank you for that. And I may sound like I'm stiff because I'm propped up in a chair so my back stays up with you. So while it may seem I have no feelings right now, uh, but I do have an abundance of feelings around race uh, because it's impacted me as a black man. And so I, I do feel and understand uh, the feelings that, that are happening and have throughout this process. Um, and so I think we do need to take a step back. Uh, this process to me has always been about, and any process to me is about the voices that need to be heard. Uh, it's not about the, the people that are heard. It's about the voices that need to be heard. 
your voices are the voices that need to be heard. And uh, I have, and still will shepherd over that. So uh, I know this isn't authorized, but I do a lot of things that are not authorized and that get me in trouble. But I think we have to take a step back given this meeting and pause and come back together as this group and walk through what action steps are needed next. Um, because the intent is to reflect what this group wants. And that's how we frame the process to begin with, is for you to tell us what to do and where to go, because this is your process. And we are the curators of that process. Meaning, bottom line, we're gonna step back, we're gonna reframe, and then we're gonna come back together as this group before we proceed forward. And I know that doesn't fit with the timeline and we're gonna to have to argue uh, with the city, but I'm in an argument every day with somebody, but I think that's the right thing to do for this process. I think it's the right thing for the voices that I've just listened to and that I wanna represent accurately because that is what oh. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to interject here because I don't really believe that that is what anyone here articulated. We just want to know what you're going, what, what's the purpose of uh, what's going to be articulated, what's going to be presented. You can tell them on the 19th every single thing that occurred here and work can still continue to be being done between now and then. So, I, I mean, I, I'm, I mean, I'm not trying to grab nobody's car keys and start driving the bus but i am saying i don't think I mean, what i just heard you it sound like you said kyler was we're gonna not do the 19th and that just kicks a little bitty piece of a can on down the road you know that may make some of those folks a little bit happier that they're not having to deal and address this well and i don't want to do that either but so I then i don't think you play. should utilize us to say, you know what, in that meeting, I, I felt I needed to push this meeting back because well, of what the, I don't think that's fair. And I don't want anyone on the call to espouse or to feel like what was we just discussed was then an attempt to push things. No. Well, I don't you want all to just need to have it prepared. To talk and we about. need to know what it is. Yeah. I'm sorry. Go ahead and speak. No, no, no. No, no, no. You talk to me. We talk. You know, we talk. We talk all the time, Sterling. So you tell me. Um, so then we need to, we still need to recalibrate from this meeting and reconnect with you before the 19th. Uh, we have a timeline that if we do do the 19th meeting that we have to make. And I, I think that Dr. Crona has experienced and feels like she now needs more time to reflect on the report. So I think it's an obvious. Kyler, We're not here to kick the can down the road, by the way. And Carolyn, go ahead. Kyler, I hear what Sterling is, say, is saying, and I respect that. But I'm reading the chat, and I'm hearing a difference of opinion. So if we can have others weigh in, um, I, I, I think we'll, we'll get the sort of full weight of the, of the group. And I agree with that because I've been reading the chat too. So, uh, Mr. Stanton, you've had your hand raised for a while. If you wanted to go ahead, and then uh, Tracy, you can go next. Well, we're going to talk about. Can everybody hear me? Yes. Okay. If uh, we're going to talk about this report, uh, one thing that's important to me to know is. Who is the audience for this report? Is it city council? Is it their constituents? Is it the citizenry? Who is this report geared to? What? Whose ear do you want when you read when you read this report? Is that rhetorical, or or are you looking for an answer to that, Anthony? Uh, I just, if, if you're going to rethink this whole process, I think you need to think of that. I, yeah. I'm, I'm going to assume it's city council, but is it really? Is it, is it them up there in chambers, or is this going to be something they got to bring back to their constituents? I mean, I think we really need to. That may help us 
refine what happens on the 19th. Who, who, what's the artist? Who are we really trying to get at? Are we trying to get at the front line? Are we trying to get behind there and get their, you know, the citizen support or their constituents? I mean, are, are you trying to convince those that are not convinced this is a problem? You know what I mean? I think the audience needs to be defined and then you direct the report to that audience. Crystal, do you want to take that or shall I answer that? Because I, I think we have a clear answer for that right now. Yeah, go ahead. That's all right, Kyla. Go ahead. Well, it's, uh, you know, clearly we're moving the city council to get the funding moved. It's just like Mr. Brown said. We got to get them to move funding to get these things in action that you've requested. Uh, so, you know, for example, uh, if you want more, less policing, then we need that money moved somewhere else that you've requested. So it's the city council members. Of course, we want other buy-in in other communities, which it wasn't Mr. Was that you, Mr. Stanton, or somebody that said that earlier? Yeah, then we have to go do that. But it's this community that's not been heard for 24 years. So my focus is to get this community heard and at that table to make those deals because it's this community that has not been heard for the 24 years. Uh, those communities to me have been heard. So it's the marginalized communities voices that need to be lifted up. Yes, those other peoples have, have opinions, but we have to influence the council. And I think there are many council members that are waiting for this. You guys have done some of that work and we're definitely willing to do with you the work to move the other council members. So I would like to add something else to that, if I may. Yes, sir, please, please. Um, are you guys planning to to be in the work session at all? Or is this going to be for public hearing, or is this a work session report? Public hearing. Okay, I would suggest that you, if it's not this report, a more nitty gritty report that happens in work session. This is the reason. Work session is public, but it's 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 in a different flavor than the than the meeting that you have in the chambers. So, I, and I keep pushing this. Work needs to happen. Work needs to happen, and real serious conversations need to happen. And those things happen. In meetings like this, in 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 back door. I mean, I, I don't want to say it like that, but work session is where nitty gritty happens, and it it may not be this report, but a spinoff or maybe even a supplement to what you're hearing tonight in front of city council in a work session setting could add a little more meat to this because it's, it's two different meetings you know and uh you may get a more candid conversation in a work session in addition to your public hearing session to carlin do you want to comment on how john has structured the city council meeting for the 19th well actually ideally the the 19th would be this presentation um, most of the other work will be stuff that's done real quickly, but ideally what we wanted was for more opportunities for discussion on the report, discussions from residents on their concerns. And so it's, it was meant to be a more organic process. And hopefully from that, we can come up with some actionable items that we can look at, you know, implementing. And the us you mean is this group here? Us is this group, yes. It's, I just do that as a suggestion. I mean, I'm like I said, I'm P and Z. I'm I'm in the belly of the beast. I know how this thing plays, and I know how these meetings go. I'm not talking from what I read about. I'm in them, and I know what catches our. I know what catches our eye. I know where. I know where the work's done, and that's what I'm saying. The work is done in the work session where they can talk a little freely about it. I'm not saying stop the current process. What I'm saying is you need to get in a work session somehow and have a more candid conversation. 
Okay. Uh, <clears throat> if I may say something, I'm going to agree with uh, Anthony on this because if you take it directly to to council, what's going to happen is that the you know the community is going to have a lot of input directly to councilmen based on what they hear. And that's going to be something that this group is never going to hear anything about, but it's going to be very, very influential. And that's why I was making a point that some of this work between communities and power bases have to be done ahead of time. If you take this, if you take what we've talked about directly in the council and it gets discussed openly, trust me, you going there's going to be a lot of pushback and that's, that's got a lot more power than this group has. Uh, and, and this thing will be will hit some kind of you know shelf someplace down the line, which has happened before time and time again. I'm with Anthony on this. We should take it to a work session and talk some of these issues out. Can can we get back to the question of whether or not um, the group believes that it should uh, happen on the 19th? Uh, let me just get the question out, Tracy. I see your hand. Right. Whether the meeting should go forward on the 19th or whether we should push the, the meeting back and, and engage in the collaborative process where you help us, to use Brittany's phrase, reimagine the process. Tracy. What does it look like for this group to be the ones to structure the meeting and it not be at the whim of Mr. Glasscock. Do we have all the right people at the table? I wanna read Brittany's comment out loud. The council doesn't have the orientation around systemic racism and white supremacy for any of this to actually move. It's all head knowledge and they haven't been agitated to move beyond that. The optics read well, meaning white folks to do a thing on policing, let's check the box. And I can't rock with that, I'm with you on that, Brittany. So they haven't done that kind of work. We don't have to do something on the 19th. We don't have to follow Mr. Glasscock's um, um, structured meaning because he falls into that very same category that Brittany's talking about. So the council needs to have facilitated uh, work sessions where they have to do this deep work that they have not done, right? They've got macro work to do and they've got micro work to do. But the people that should be running the agenda are the people like us. And also we find, need to find a way to get the police people on board because they're not on board with us and they are also the community right? City Hall is also the community, right? The fact of the matter is uh, the police department say, oh, they don't respect black people. That's a fact. The reason white race matters, for instance, white people down there is because guess what? When white people say something, they listen. When black people say something, they don't listen. All right. That's messed up. All right. So I don't like this idea that this whole structure is about what Mr. Glasscock wants us to do. He's not my daddy. All right. And he might be the city manager, but he might learn something by sharing power, which is what we've been asking the police department to do, to have a two-way converse, deliberative conversation with us, which they don't want to do. And also, um, I'm sorry, y'all consultants are not, you guys are not ready for this, right? But we do have stuff that we can bring to the table. So what does it look like, besides reimagining, to let the community actually structure the meeting to discuss the things that we want to talk about, not the data, but the action items, right? The micro and the macro. And also to hold our council people accountable for dragging their feet, for not doing the deep learning that they need to do because they don't want to. And that part has to stop. Okay, one advocate for going forward on the 19th, one advocate for pushing it off. Put I'm not for going forward on the 19th. I, that, that's what I heard you say, Tracy. Okay, I just wanna make sure, sorry about that. Other and Anthony, you, I saw Anthony raise his hand again, but anyone else can go too. Uh, we need yeah. to hear from others as well. There's there's 30 some odd, 30 people on the call. Hey, I've been waiting for 30 some odd minutes patiently, didn't interrupt at all. So I'm playing the game as it's played. <laughs> I, my hand, I, hit the, I hit the hand button, I'm playing the game as it's played. So if my hand was raised and I'm recognized, I want to play the game correct. Can I, I proceed? It's, Can I proceed? It's, it's great. It's great. We just really do want to gauge. Uh, just even we can do a show of hands or your, your button uh, in the box to let us know so we can get a gauge here at this point of what people want to do. Uh, because this process has been about empowering the folks 
any way it's not been about, been about us as, as consultants. Uh, so, uh, and we have a one in one vote. Uh, I think actually it was uh, uh, Sterling, Anthony and James who proposed uh, moving the meeting. Uh, it looks like Kendra has her hand raised. So you can go ahead, Kendra. Am I, okay. Am I recognized first? Are we going to take the vote or what are we going to do here? I, I'm playing the game. I feel like I just got foul ball. <laughs> I mean, we're not going to, we're not going to play with the structure. I raised my hand. We're not going to play the structure then, you know. Here. You can, you can, I get up and go ahead. to go to work. I can get off right now. You go, go ahead. ahead. Go ahead and say what you're going to say. Uh, hey, I, you know, this is where I'm at. I, I, I agree with Tracy with the police situation. I work with affordable housing. I was working with affordable housing in 2008. We had this task force. We had no banks involved. The banks didn't say a word. So affordable housing didn't move in 2008. We have banks at the table now and they're talking. Now we have, we have a land trust. I'm involved with the land trust. When the banks talk, things move. So that goes back to the police, that the police are not talking. If we're not hearing from the police, this is not going to move. They're not at the table. They're not talking. If you don't have the bank, if you don't have the police there to discuss policing, this ain't going to move. So we need to get the police here, or they're making a statement that this is not going to move. Thank you for your time. Thank you, brother Anthony Fant. Oh, I didn't mean to hit my mute off. Who's next, Gina, please? Yeah. Uh, Kendra next? had her ra hand raised, so you can go ahead. I just wanted to say that I do, I agree. I think that until we actually are able to come together again and discuss more uh, uh, about what to actually be done at the, the next meeting, I think that we need to, to, to hold that meeting off. I think there's a whole lot of, uh, of unanswered um, questions and, 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 and concerns and things that we do need to address prior to you guys going in and representing us in, the, in that meeting. And we do, I agree with him, we do need to have the police involved. They are a big part of the problem. So in order for them to know that they have issues, we have to address those head on with them. So they do definitely need to be involved. And I do I, I agree. We don't need to move forward just yet. That's all I have to say. Yep. Crystal. Uh, yeah, I, I, I really have to say um, I, I would not feel comfortable. Uh, it, it, and I don't care if that means something doesn't happen on the 19th or it does, but whatever ends up happening, um, I don't feel comfortable moving forward until and, and if I don't know, I'm not responsible for how this is gonna happen, but however we need to come together, um, I'm not here to take advantage of your time, but I don't feel comfortable uh, leaving things the way this is right now. Uh, I want us to get some things nailed out um, so that I'm doing what, what I, I'm supposed to be doing here. Uh. Colleen, can you keep track of who's voting which way, and both verbally uh, and as well as capture it from the chat? People are are essentially voting in the chat. Right. Um, Tina, who's next? No one else has their hand raised. So, anyone? Okay. I was waiting too long for the hand raised too, so I stopped using. Okay, you can go ahead uh, then. I'm a, no, I'm a no vote for the 19th. If this is if this is all determined around what the people want and how the people want to move, then I'm not going to be beholden to what some white men in the city want to do. So until we get this right and until it feels like uh, something that everybody can move on and something that's actually reflective of the voice of the people, I'm not interested in presenting nothing to the council because it's Tracy name. Y'all want to talk anti-racism with a bunch of people that got some implicit and explicit bias. And everything that we talking about right now gonna fall on deaf ears because they not ready to receive it. So I'm interested in some receipts of what's the pre-work that they do 
before we have any conversation with them. And that's including, that's not just including the city, that's including Jeff Jones and his people too. Mike, if you want to go back and report back to your team. If y'all want recommendations on people that can walk y'all through this, I got a lot of them. But until they get some anti-racism training that actually means something, Nothing that we're saying here is going to be of value, and we're going to be right here next summer when more Black people die, or in the winter when more Black people die, because they're going to keep killing us. And yeah, I just hope and pray that they don't hit Columbia <laughs> before the city figure out some optics around how to deal with it all. Thank you, Brittany. And um, there was a question from Roy that asked, what does or would the agenda look like for the 19th if you decided to move forward with it? Well, we haven't put that together yet. So, because we were waiting on input. So, and that was from who? Roy? Roy. Yeah. So, Shonda has her hand up. Hamilton, unmute yourself. I really didn't have my hand up. I probably was making a gesture because you said there's no agenda, but there's a report being presented. So I was kind of confused on what. Yeah, I'm excited no, to see that report. Like, I, it's a no for me because I also don't want someone going up there and representing me with something I haven't even really seen some comments that she took and made the report, not saying anything against her report, but I just would like to see someone who's representing me where this information actually came from everything. I don't want one person to be a voice for me and I don't even know, you know, what the information is. So it's a no for me, but I didn't have my hand raised. I was talking to myself. <laughs> We've got your name though, we hear you. Yeah, I wanna hear what you have to say, so it's all right. Anybody else? Am I? I do think if there's no agenda, then what? I mean, yeah, I saw, I guess Roy had said there's no agenda of slapping the face. So I guess that report is the agenda. Is I guess I guess I'm kind of missing something. The report, the report is the core agenda. And then we have talked about preliminary action steps that we didn't solidify in advance of this meeting and we wanted your thoughts, which we've gotten and then some tonight. And, um, and that's why, honestly, um, we had a, a chat exchange, uh, some of us, that led us to the conclusion that pushing back was the, the right thing to do. Well, we're, we're taking a vote on whether that's the right thing to do. Yeah. So that, so that you- But so you guys had already planned on doing it anyway. You guys had already said you had already planned on doing it anyway. You said you were taking this report to the city council on the 19th without anyone ever seeing it and telling us you took all of our, re our responses and this is what you're going to present at the city council. You already had planned on doing it. Yeah. I knew at the very beginning I didn't want to be a part of it, that report being presented because I didn't even know what was going to even be said. I like want to see that whole 14 pages and be able to read that. I'm a visual person, first of all. So all this really talk and stuff doesn't really mean anything to me. I need to see where you got your information. It felt like a survey to me is what you guys just explained to me. It's like, oh, we took a survey on what everyone said, and this is what we came up with. I want to see what you actually, I, I'm visual. So all this talk really means nothing. I need to have that paper in front of me, and I need to be able to read it, and I need to be able to look through it, and I need to look at the data. I need to see all these things. This like means nothing to me. <laughs> it's just words. So, but thank you. Sterling. I'm, I'm just wanting uh, want to uplift what Miss Hamilton just said, Shonda. That's I can I think that's really the gist of this, and it sound uh, it sounds more and more like the spirit of what was going to occur on the 19th was a you know a coalition of what we told you all in the stakeholder meetings. Um, we got to see what's on those other 11 pages. I mean, that was my very first original question. When we can see that, 
Because, I, I mean, again, I would think you're probably going to have more than 11 additional pages. Like, I, I understood the kind of goal. You know, you don't want this big old data stack. Of, I get all that. But we, we that's the real work, at least for what this group, at least what I believe this group of stakeholder meetings was supposed to be getting around to. So, you know, what the, what's on those other pages is, I think, extraordinarily integral um, before we go forward. And, and, and another uplift to Brother Anthony, work session is exactly where this kind of stuff's done. And Brother Witt was on that point too, all of them. Any other comments? Because uh, we're, uh, I think it, we really just are looking for votes at this point, uh, where people want to go. That's what, again, this has all been about is a citizen-led process. I think you were told that from the beginning. I know that's hard to believe. Uh, and then that's what this meeting was about, to confirm what people heard, what where people are, and what people want to do. So. Yeah. Tracy has her hand raised. Okay, if we want to just get a vote from people, I'm not trying to shut anybody down. But You're if shutting you're, me down, so I'm gonna make my comment. Well, that's fine, but if, I just want okay. to remind people. You have to talk a lot, it's good. And, and so then go ahead. Here's but. the thing, here's the thing, here's the thing, here's the thing. The thing about a work session is that the public doesn't get to comment in work session. So I just am asking for some explicitness about work session. Okay, so so first of all, I think I agree with Crowley. Let's vote to de 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 defer the report. But the other thing is, we need to be clear about the kind of work session we want to have. So if you're talking about a council work session where they're going to get some very good deep work so that they can work on those issues, that's going to take them more than one meeting. And if you're talking about a work session where we come together and talk about how we want to move to move forward, that is something different, right? So um, those are the things that I'm seeing um, moving forward. I, I want to be very clear, and I know Kaysen talked about this, but the council is not moved by uh, Black people coming to the council and explaining their pain over and over again. They don't care, right? They don't care. They do not make the connection between their 19th century mentality of organizing the city and their social hierarchy and the outcomes that they have. That's a problem because they believe they have white supremacist thinking. And that's a fact and we need to use those words. We need to say the words white supremacist thinking because that's what it is, right? The other problem I have is the, again, this whole organization thing that it's up to Mr. Glasscock and it's up to the consultants. We need to, we need to do away with that language and start having more two-way deliberative conversation about sharing power to do this, right? Because it's not on the, count, the consultants to speak for us. That's wrong language language. The problem is that we keep doing reports where we're spoken for and we're not heard. So I think we should switch roles and where we are the driver, right? And we tell you and you take orders about what we want to put in the report and how we want to do it. Now that changes your whole game plan and I'm sure you can go talk to John Glasscock about it. I'll type him a note in the morning and let him know myself. But this is a power dynamic that needs to change. Every single time we have these meetings, the consultants get to be in charge and they tell us what to do and they talk to us like they're, they're our mommy and daddy. And I got to tell you, that's very offensive to me. I'm 56 years old and I don't like it. All right. So and I'm, I am directing that at you, Kyler. I'm 56 years old and I don't like to be spoken to like I'm somebody's daughter and I have my own baggage and there's a reason why I act like that. So but we all are adults and we do wanna see things move forward, micro and macro. We understand that we need to have a working agenda that's multiple layers, right? Not just one layer. And also there's gonna be multiple conversations going on at once, right? And it's super, super and super important. And Mike, I hope you go back and tell this to the chief that the cops do have to come to the table and they're gonna to have to be vulnerable like us. As long as it's only black people coming to the table, sharing their pain and the cops get to to stand back and fake or whatever it is they're doing when we have marches and all that and they're not having to get vulnerable with us that hurts our whole community they have to become human with us and i will never ex i will never respect the authority of police as long as they do not ex respect my authority as a human being and when i say my authority as a, i mean my sovereignty as a human being my right to disagree with them, my right to question them, and also our right as a community to ask them questions and to expect answers, not one month from now, not two months from now, 
fucking tomorrow. And I'm tired of that. Okay, I'm mad. I'm going to go now. Good night. Any more comments? Um, there was a question from Iman that asked, when can we plan our follow-up that is being discussed? We're going to have to look at calendars and send out a follow-up uh, at this point. That's all we can do. So, Iman. Uh, Colleen, what, what's the vote look like, please? Um, I have yet to receive anyone to vote to go ahead with the meeting on the 19th. Okay. Well, I would. I thought Sterling and Anthony and James were in that. Their their comments suggested that. No. No. Did I mishear them? Unless, I think they're wanting the work session. I don't think they're wanting the report. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. No, on the nineteenth. I'm sorry, Sterling. What was that? The things, there no. were some other things that I was under the. I'm sorry, you're cutting out. He's no yeah. on the 19th. Said no on the 19th. Okay. No on the 19th. Okay. All right. Um, and Steve right. Calloway voted in the thing, and Steve Stan Anthony Stanton voted in the window here. Yeah, I got all defers in the window here. Okay, uh, all right. Tisha, Valerie, uh, DeAndre, uh, I can't, I'm losing my sight here. So, so may I ask you this then while we still have you, um, do you want to see, and this, I, 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 uh, I hope this doesn't give Crystal agita, um, uh, do we share with you the report in its current form? And if we share it with you, then we know that it will end up in the hands of city council. Uh, I mean, uh, and is that okay with you? It will work its way out. If, it, if we share it with the 72 of you, you know it will work its way out. And it, is that what you want? When were you going to share the report with us before the meeting? The 16th. It gets uploaded to a system, a city system called Granicus. And that's when were you going to share it with us? I'm saying to you, we were going to share it with you at the same exact time we were going to share it with city council members who have not seen it yet. And that is you share? On, on, just, on, just, on the 16th of October. That was a original plan. Now, uh, now that can change, Chandra. That's what, what, why I'm asking. Chandra. The question. Chandra. Yeah. Why would you? Why would you submit something to City Council that we haven't seen that you're representing us and we haven't seen that? I don't want anything. If you anything that is going to be submitted for City Council, I would like to see it. If it's supposed to be like having anything to do with my opinions. By any of that, I would like to see it first. I hear you, and we're no longer, the vote tonight was that nothing is being formally submitted. That was the plan, though, previously. I understand that, and that's because, that's based on a qualitative analysis process that, that Dr. Croner has followed. And we skipped over her credentials, and I'm sorry that we did skip over her credentials, because they're quite extensive. But, um, but uh, yeah, I know. You're, you're muted. I can't hear. I can't hear you. You're, you're, Shonda. You're muted. I can't hear you. I don't have a problem I'm not questioning sharing. her credentials at all. I'm not questioning her credentials. I'm saying if she's going to represent me, I have the right to see what she's representing. No one gets to go and talk on my behalf without me approving that first, mm -hmm. or without. I don't like that. So, yeah. I have that could zero. Be something that's changed. And I'm not questioning your credentials at all, but I still need to know. But like, what's I can't be represented without you not knowing what. Carolyn, why are you bringing up her credentials like that? Why why would you do that? That has nothing to do with anything. Can I? Because normally, 
I would have. It's not a qualitative process. It's not a qualitative process. This is not a strict qualitative process. It's a hybrid of things. It is definitely not a qualitative process. It steals from the qualitative process, but it is not pure at all. It is butchered. Okay. And one thing you don't do in a qualitative process, you don't tell your participants what to do. And you definitely don't tell your participants, you need to listen to such and such because they're in charge and this is your agenda. Pro pro qualitative process does not work like that. They don't run it like a plantation. It's democratic and it's two way and people agree to it. That's what's different about qualitative. Am I right, Crystal? Yeah. Thank you. Yes, I don't have, a, I don't have any problem at all um, sharing this report. Uh, and I think that should be pretty clear to anybody because I wanted to have this meeting. Um, I, there's nothing I've written. I would love for you to see it. I think the issue has been about at least having some, of, before I had a chance to talk to you, the fact that I had quotations in there and I wanted to make sure that people were okay with me using their quotations. And so I didn't wanna be sending out confidential information. That's it. Other than that, um, I don't have an issue with any of that. Were there names attached to the quotations? No, but there's a couple of them where I, I did try really hard to kind of distance out who, who it might be, but some of them you can tell they're students. Some of I think them going into the meeting, I think it was very clear that anything that we said, it was a meeting that we were sharing um, our experiences, sharing our thoughts. So I think that was understood that you guys were taking that information from what we said in the first place. So I don't know that um, not wanting to share it with us because of quotes or things that was said is kind of like really a reason because we understood that when we went into this process that we were to there to be honest, to be open, to speak freely. So I don't think anything that was said by anybody was something that they didn't want or had a concern about someone else hearing or seeing. Well, some of it is personal. And if you weren't in the interview and you haven't seen the data, you'll just have to trust me. So everyone that's on the call wasn't in the interview? I'm, I'm not sure because I don't know. I mean, I can't, you, I can't even see both screens. Uh, You're taking calls from people who were in the interview, though. Yeah, yes. Some of them were students, and there was a, at least another person, uh, and that's why I said that up front. Um, I was very careful about, about not describing painful things that happen to people, because I think that that's exactly what you're saying. It's sensationalizing something, um, and nobody needs to hear that anymore or be convinced of that anymore, but there were some uh at least one participant talking about very personal pain and out of body out of body experience feelings and i didn't want to exploit a couple of these people without first having their permission i didn't want them to feel like why'd you i don't know that i remembered saying that or i you know i just wanted to be careful about that but there's certainly nothing other than that going on here okay so but that was already in the report yeah, it, well i mean my draft but it's not i haven't I wasn't gonna do anything with it till we all had a chance to meet. And that's why I asked you that question up front. But there's nothing other than that going on here. I'm just, uh, <laughs> uh, just trying to do a good job. But Crystal, but Crystal, you understand, right? That our, our desire is not to see our narratives used as a, as a plank for the council, because they're not gonna hear that. We're asking for something much deeper, right? Mm -hmm. We're asking, we're really asking for you guys as consultants to reimagine this whole <laughs> process, right? Because you've endeavored to do a process with good intent, with good intent, but it doesn't actually represent a way for us to transform the power dynamics that we've been talking about power or the policy mm -hmm. right or the people because this is what happens every single time and the other thing that happens is reports get written and things get said right that sensationalize sensationalize or i would say really 
don't allow people to truly understand um, the pain and all that that's going on. It's that, that's a huge problem. So the reports things are, are really bad because our council are not prepared to receive that. Our mayor, all, none of these people are prepared. They do not understand any kind of black experience. They don't under, They don't even, we have a council person who's complaining about um, having, I, he doesn't want to spend money on poor people who can't pay their utility bills. Okay, so we don't just have a race problem. We have a class problem, okay, on the council. And my opinion is if you are on council and you have a problem with someone who's poor, you shouldn't be on the council. Okay, I'm getting out of my lane. But my point is, my point is that the way this all was planned, none of us knew what was going on. We don't have a timeline. We never saw the protocol for what you were gonna do. This, there is no research protocol. And I would argue if it was a research protocol, the wrong questions have been asked. The wrong questions have been asked. Because as Sterling said, the, quest, the problem we have is we're complaining about the way we are treated by the police and the fact that the police don't respect us and there's no accountability for the police, there's no accountability for the sheriff, there's no accountability for city manager, there's no accountability for the mayor. None of these white folks have two ounces of accountability for anything, okay? So yeah, I'm, I'm mad, I'm sorry, I can't help it. I'm being an angry black woman right now, but that's just how it is, I'm keeping it real, okay? So I don't see why we don't the story is gonna matter. Well, I'm just saying that we don't, none of this conversation with using that narratives gives us any kind of accountability over the power that these people have to make any kind of change. And as long as we keep getting consultants that get ahead of us and think that they know what's going on, it's a problem. So I'm just saying, y'all need to pull back, listen, group up with us, let us give you some direction and you might be okay. And, and that's what we're, we've been, that's what we're trying to be, Tracy. We're and you trying should to listen, and you should, you should listen to Brittany. And I get really upset when people start bringing out people's credentials. That's very white and pretentious. I don't like it. So don't do it again. All right. But we are trying to be responsive. That's why we pulled up on the 19th because we heard you for the last two, two and a half hours that, <laughs> that you need, you need to, uh, you need to help us reimagine the process. Yeah, uh, you know, I, I really am happy, honestly. If there's anything else that came up tonight, I'm happy to hear you say that. I mean, I, I kind of harken back to one of the first things that I mentioned to you all, that the spirit of this process, and I think that's what Ms. Hamilton is speaking to uh, very eloquently. The spirit of this process, in my opinion, was flawed from the jump when you all told us you were doing a qualitative report and we didn't get to see the questions before we had to sit down and answer them. Um, in no circumstance can I fathom that then you all would want very thorough, you know, answers and take that look at them. So I'm glad that it really appears finally that that's being done now. So, I look forward to hearing what's happening next. I've been, I, I'm really looking forward to when the work, the work with this group, like the real true work gets started. And, and truly, Lieutenant Hester, it is, it's almost incumbent upon you to, to go back to the department, sir, and, and request for someone to come that is going to be involved. I appreciate your listening. I appreciate it. But no one in this conversation has still spoken for Columbia Police Department. And as, as much as I know how protocols, how policy and procedures run inside of a home, I know that I can't go without talking to my wife or spouse or whomever have you want to address it here um, when issues arise. Um, and this is a very one-sided still issue when talking about, I mean, you hear us talking about how can we insert policy? What are the steps? Who do we need to talk to? You're not speaking. And we don't need a silent partner. So um, I, again, I appreciate that the work has been done. We, we, the real true work is being done, but Lieutenant Hester, please um, invite Chief Jones to come sit um, in these meetings. Um, Ms. Fowler, if you're still on the call, uh, have Brian Treese come. Uh, I mean, that's
He needs a bad internet connection. He'll be back, I think, in a minute. I, I lost Sterling there. I, I just want to say I'm listening because everybody has the chance to, to speak, and I don't want to speak over anybody or take away their time. But, but I understand what he's saying. I, I'm not trying to not participate. I'm trying to be a, a good part. At the risk of sounding like an apologist for the chief, which I most assuredly am not, um, the chief did in fact ask us as recently as yesterday whether or not he should uh, attend, could and should attend tonight's meeting. And we take responsibility for waving him off because um, this meeting was designed to be only people who participated in the interview process for the reasons that Crystal has outlined is that she wanted it to be more of a private um, uh, meeting. And so if that was a misstep, we own it. I'm not really sure what having Jones or really anyone from the department would do because they know how they get down and they know the playbook that they use. Folks are silent because people can't justify their actions, right? It ain't no secret that what's happening with the department is foul and that there are officers who don't need to be officers and that we have officers um, at best to like be nice and keep my language clean uh, that are problematic. I'm more concerned why we don't have more city representation. Why is Pat the only council person who got in here uh, to listen to this conversation? People have been asking all night where Glasscock is at. He has things to say outside of this meeting space about how things should be shaped, but he don't want to actually come into this meeting and dialogue with the people. Like that's confusing to me. And then again, we having conversations about process and why things were shared uh, halfway. Why were we going to get access to information uh, in tandem with other people when if we are the folks, if y'all really, this go back to my trust in my relationship thing. If y'all really are trying to do something different than what's been done before, like you actually have to like show and tell and show and prove it, right? So the report that we got tonight shouldn't have been half of the report. We should have been able to have access to whatever Crystal has put together so far so people can actually come in here and give thoughts and suggestions about what needs to change. Um, and like, yeah, I don't even really know how helpful this, this evening was because it don't feel like we accomplished anything outside of y'all did some things without the people and now y'all trying to come back to the people and get us to sign off on some processes that y'all should have talked to us about in the first place. And so now we in this position where we didn't been on this call for damn near three hours, we ain't got nothing done and we actually could have had some really productive time with one another if folks, if the process would have been different. I'm, can we stop playing by the processes that are in place and put together something else? Everybody here talking about, I want a seat at the table. Let me have a seat at the table. I don't want to see that nobody table. Give us the tools to put a table together and then we'll let y'all know who we want to sit at. And it just don't, it feel like we playing the same game by a different name with a different cast of characters. And it, this is all very confusing to me. We didn't talk about a timeline for three hours and I still can't give you no dates on that timeline besides the 19th. So like, what are we really doing here? And are y'all withholding information? And what do we need to do to have this be the most transparent process that it can be? What is, how do you guys as consultants um, give it opinions and advise, advise on some things and knowing that the other people that you brought into this call who were part of those meetings are actually the people that are driving the decisions and making the decisions. Because right now it feel like, yeah, I'm planning some stuff and then coming back to us to approve it. And that just feels uncomfortable to me. Don't none of this feel, I don't feel like y'all telling the truth about a lot of things right now. To you, yeah, Roy, it feel like lip service. Ain't nobody really told me what we're going to do that's going to shake up the game. And that's why I'm here. That's why my people that are on the call are here. Because we, y'all told us that y'all are ready to shake up the game. So what we finna shake up and how we finna shake it up. Because people are going to ride with you. You got people that you can mobilize and organize into doing something. But y'all got to tell us what y'all trying to do so we can make sure that it actually is in alignment with what the people want. And I just feel like, truth be told, that like the city just speaking through y'all. 
it don't feel it don't feel like something that's being people driven to me because it doesn't feel like we have any transparency in how this process has been going thus far. That's all I gotta say. Thank you, Brittany. Thank you. And that's fair. Uh, because we can't, we have to be people driven, we can't be city driven. And uh, with that, you know, it's clear to me, we cannot present at the city meeting on the 19th. Uh, it's not going to happen. And, you know, I'm willing to uh, speak with John on that matter. It's what it is. Uh, I am an organizer and have been for three decades. I stay with my people and the, the, we're here to represent these voices. Um, and um, so we will have another meeting with this group before anything moves forward. Uh, this group was to obtain the final approval or input um, in uh, Crystal's work. Uh, and so we cannot move forward until we are accurate and running uh, fully transparent. Uh, we had deadlines uh, to meet, but it's clear that this group is not ready to move forward. So, um, so that will we'll end the meeting and we'll follow up. Um, have to have can a we have a follow up email with those deadlines? Like, can we can we hear what well, those we're are? We're not going to follow those deadlines. We're okay. Right now. I think I think DeCarlin was trying to say something. I course. know DeCarlin is going to say something because I've just said what I'm going to say. But DeCarlin, it, it, uh, we, we've heard from the people, so I'm going to let you speak. But I have to say that what I've heard from these people and they voted is what it is. And I know I, he's going to say something different. So go, right, go ahead. I don't know what you're going to say, but go ahead. No, I'm not. I'm not going to say anything contrary to, to what's, been, what's been said. Uh, and, and, you know, it's, I agree, we're not ready. And so what does, what does this process look like? And so, you know, I think Tracy brought it up, you know, you, we brought in consultants and we didn't talk to the community members that have been on the, on the forefront doing the work. And so if, if we need to reverse our course and change our processes and change what we're trying to do, then let's do that. And, and so, you know, I know we, we talk about, you know, dealing with power and uh, what's going on in city hall and going on in the police department and why John's not here. And, um, and you no, know, I'm hoping that uh, as, uh, you know, as a deputy city manager and a former city manager, that you know, my voice and my ability to hopefully listen, but you no, know, I've also had the same experiences. You know, I've, ha I've had the same pains, the same hurts, and you know, listening to what a lot of people said you know, brought back some of that trauma. And so I, I understand that we want to do something different. And so let's do that. I don't want to do anything that's not real, that's not genuine, that's not going to you know, create positive change for the community. I, I wouldn't be part of that. It would. Like, you know, like Sterling said, it would be a waste of time and no one wants to waste time. And so we hear you, we hear the concerns, we hear the complaints, we, we understand. And so let's fix it, let's make it better. Let's make sure that whatever we present to the city council is something that everyone can be proud of and say, yeah, here's what we want, here's what we need to see done. And so I'm on board 100%. So let, let's roll up our sleeves. Let's get let's get to work. I have another quick question. This is Shonda. So in that report, the questions that were specifically asked to each of us, and we were all asked the same eight or nine, eight questions or so, I can't remember, are those addressed in the report? Or is it just us sharing stories of our um, hurts? I mean, like, are those questions specifically addressed in this report? I can answer that, at least part of it. Um, the way that I came up with the recommendations and the themes were based on how each of the individuals and the groups 
prioritized the issues that they brought up as being main concerns. The problems that they were having, the racial profiling, um, the lack of authentic connection, um, all the things that, by the way, um, after I waited to do the lit review of previous reports until after I had analyzed the data, um, because I didn't want to be uh, swayed by any of that, but uh, the recommendations, they were all there. I, I don't think that any of this is an epiphany. Um, it was just a confirmation that these are longstanding issues. Um, and so that's how the, your response is. There wasn't, I didn't include a bunch of stories. Um, well, the, the questions were actually like included. That, in painful the stories. I'm sorry. Oh, the questions were included in the report that were asked of each of us, all the same questions that we were all asked were included in that report. Yeah, there's four, there were four questions. What do you see the state of policing? Um, you know, describe that. I'm trying to remember now, you think I would, it's just getting late. Um, what do you think are the, uh, the most prioritized things that you wanna see happen within so many days? Um, what do you need to build trust? Uh, and what ended up happening was when I went through all of this data, uh, analyzing the data, was that there were a lot of overlaps between all of those things because in order to build trust, you needed to see some of these other things changing and these other things not happening anymore. And so that's why I pulled out the themes the way that I did because they were so prevalent across all of the responses that the lack of trust was due to the fact that there isn't any data on the traffic stops still. Um, and so everything that I did uh, in that report lays out exactly the points that people made in their responses. And then at the end, I included quotes um, about what the vision was, about public safety being for all people, about where's the data, that kind of stuff to show in your own words what you were asking. Uh, and I was very careful about, again, not including any stories where people were describing something painful that had happened to them, because I just think that time, I agree with you. I just don't think it's time to keep sharing these stories over and over again, but I did want to share, this is having a traumatic impact on people. And this was the, res the result of this. You know, these are the feelings I had after I got pulled over and treated this way, because I do think that people need to know that. Um, and so, I am more than happy to share that report, uh, absolutely. And then think about ways, I mean, I can't, I, I'm worried about saying too much because I'm not managing the project, but in my mind and in my heart, I would share that report out and then invite anybody that wants to help me craft that into, you know, take over sections of it. You know, I don't care, but let's just get it if you guys want to contact me and we do something like that, I'd love it. Um, so this isn't my report. <laughs> Crystal, know? did you put the vehicle stop report data in the report at all? Or is there a reference or mention to that? Because that yes. report is pretty specific, uh, not just by city, but the county data too. Um, in terms of the actual results? In terms of racial discrepancies by rate or discrepancies by age, by race, what people are getting pulled over for, if that uh, materializes to an arrest or not. I had not, did not put the specifics of what that, that data looked like. I put in there that there are definitely disparities and there are problems and that they need to collect that data more systematically um, along with some other data that isn't, I think, and that's part of that data development, my own recommendations I put at the end where I kind of inserted myself into it a little bit and just said, this data isn't being collected in a way that's gonna get us to the issue, yeah. right? And yeah. so I don't know that that data, if it exists, how it exists. And so that would be a, a really important next step that I recommend is if I don't have the data, I don't know, but it's a problem, right? And so um, again, I, I, I know, I can't really, I'm not the, I really am open to anybody that would want to be involved. If that was something that we decided to do moving forward, 
um, I think it would be so much better. Would it be, would it make sense for you to share the, the report out with this group and then we can name like what holes we feel are missing? Yep. And then from there, there can be like some working groups or like maybe it's like, oh, I can put that together. I don't need like anybody to help. I just need to know what I'm walking away from this meeting, like actually doing. Because think... there's a lot going on right now. <laughs> Other people have jobs and other obligations and kids and family and life that they pushed aside for this. I'm working while we're doing this meeting. Um, I just like, I need to know what I'm leaving doing. Brittany, I like that idea. In fact, I'm gonna, that's what I would like to do. Um, I'll send it out and then whoever's interested in, in getting back with me so that we can figure out what the best way is to move forward on that. That is a next concrete action step. And I would feel so relieved and actually really happy to have your expertise. Anybody that's interested in that. Um, and I did pull that out in the report as well, you guys, that there's a lot of expertise within this group that we need to be uh, tapping into. Okay, so I see that. And um, would really think that the whole thing would benefit having that kind of involvement for anybody that's interested. Um, and Chad has his hand raised if he wanted to say something. Okay. And I think after Chad that we're two hours over will be the last question, but our next steps will be at getting the report out for comments and circulating that as soon as possible. Chad. Uh, yeah. I just wanted to speak um, to the vehicle stop data. Uh, real quick, just so you, so I, I don't know how much you've been following, um, because frankly, the uh, vehicle stop data reports that have been maintained by the city are not um, caught up to date on the links. They're like almost a year in arrears now. So to Carlin, if you could um, maybe put your boot up somebody's ass to get that shit updated, that'd be awesome. Uh, because we have gone through tons and tons and tons of material, and it's like sitting in a vacuum. Um, and that's just ridiculous. So I, I do have a lot of correspondence. I have a lot of reports. And what I'll probably end up doing is going to Race Matters Friends website, creating a link and sharing a public folder with all that information. So if you guys want to give me a day or two to get that set up, uh, I would suggest going back there and you can see what I have um, for my records at least. And uh, we'd be happy to share that with you. I want to thank everybody. Awesome. I don't think this was a waste of time. We, our intent is your engagement, and we want to honor that as the consultants. Um, and uh, I think to Carlin, as, as working for the city does, I know that's my intent. Um, so uh, we'll move forward in that way. And I thank you for being here. Race to work is never easy, uh, and we have to do this. Uh, so thank you, everybody, for staying on and saying what you needed to say and what you had to say, because this is important. And I agree, we have to get it right. Uh, and I agree with, oh, his face has left me, but Roy and someone else about the city work sessions and, uh, and Sterling as well, and about working strategically together. Everybody brings lots of skills and that is the purpose of this process. Uh, while it may seem confusing, we are trying to shake it up so that we do get you results. So thank you. Let's come back together and we'll do it through the report and we'll continue to communicate because the 19 wasn't the end either. Uh, this is a process that we're going to continue until we reach whatever goal that you guys decide is the goal. Okay. Uh, again, you are the leaders of this process. We are the support team of the process. All right. Thank you very much. We will follow up one with the report and then for feedback and then for other action after that. So please, again, you're needed. This is your project. Uh, it really is. Uh, and I'm with you to support your project. Thank you and have a good night. Thank you. Looking forward to hearing from you soon, hopefully. Oh, yeah. Keep the channel open. Some of us going to keep 
chopping wood. Leave the channel open. Or maybe not. I don't know. I don't think we can. Um, man, we taxpayers. We paying this no, no, bill for this thing on Zoom. Don't play. You know the caller now. When you start talking about it, it ain't going. It can't afford it. We paying for it. Y'all keep it on. To, look, we gonna start doing disco lights. I'll call morning. you back, right. Sterling. Knock it off. <laughs> <laughs> Good night. You, you know I. You, we. This was too. Y'all got somebody got to smile about something. <laughs> Roy wants to know when we're gonna get the report. Um, we'll try to get it out sometime this week. Okay. So, Roy. Roy, did you hear that, Roy? Can everybody go drink a bottle of wine. Good night. Yes, ma'am. Good night, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.